hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello if you're watching this on replay. Um, it's funny because I was just live streaming this morning, but that was very warm too. So um, tonight's like my actual <laughs> live stream happening. Uh, it's still a little hot, even though it's cooler than usual, but I'm always hot. Chickens will go to sleep very soon because the sun's setting. Um, if you're here, say something in the chat so I know I'm not all alone talking to myself. I'll get you some phantoms too. And yeah, there's going to be cars. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, it's It's a Sunday night, which I normally don't do anything on weekends because of the outside noise like that <laughs> but um it's kind of a nice cool summer evening right now so um hopefully it's not too bad i really hope so um if it is we'll just do this another day it's totally fine <laughs> um but yeah if anyone's here, say something so I know I'm not completely alone. Whew, okay. <laughs> I just took a little shower, so I'm still kind of damp from that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And I'm obviously not done up or anything. <laughs> I would like to be, but I am not. I don't have the energy for makeup and styling myself that well. Ooh. Hey, Tasia. I haven't seen you for a minute. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, so tonight's just going to be fun and chill. We'll wait for more people to join before we do any trivia. I've been making a trivia challenge for my uh, live stream viewers, and um, I wanted to it's to be kind of like hardcore and um have points and stuff but um i don't know Th this past week and a half has been really hard for me mentally and it's it's like I, i'm not in the mindset to do that kind of thing anymore like i just like chill and hanging out with you guys and learning history and talking about the world <laughs> and traveling and all those things Hey, Doomchita. Doomchita, Doomchita. Bum, bum. I'm surprised you haven't changed your name to Pink Venom yet. That's so, it's so good. I love Blackpink. I love them with my whole heart. Hey, Adam, welcome. Um, I got to see Blackpink on tour in 2019 in LA. They were great. They were fantastic. I got to go to Soundcheck. Jisoo made eye contact with me. It was wonderful. <laughs> uh, but um, the, the actual, like time being there was really horrible. Hey, Supernova, I've been talking to you forever. Hi, 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 welcome. So we are researching um, countries of the world. Um, I've got books here. This is what I'm filming tonight. Kazakhstan, I just haven't written the script yet, but I already know what it's going to say. And I'm going to have my big atlas out because it has a huge map of Kazakhstan with like the Cosmodrome and the uh, the nuclear testing sites are labeled on it. Beach Bunny. I do not. I know Bad Bunny, Kilo, but not Beach Bunny. I've never heard of them. Um, and this is, oh, and the fridge is still plugged in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no more head jokes. Um, my fridge was unplugged for four and a half hours this morning while I was live streaming, so it's going to be plugged in today. I bought this book on Amazon because my phone service sent me a $20 Amazon gift card. So I spent it. And uh, yeah, pretty much if it's not K-pop, I don't know who it is. That's all I listen to. And this book is amazing. Indie pop, yeah, that's why I don't know. I'm sure they're very chill though. It's like, like look at these maps. 
they're amazing. I can't wait to play around with this book with you guys and trace all these little things with my little pencil and everything. It's going to be good. <laughs> it's really interesting. I was saying this morning that I, all I've read was the first chapter about Mesopotamia and uh, Sumer and Akkad and all that. And it was so interesting. There were so much details that I didn't know about Sumer. And then... Um, here's what I'm actually going to research. I have not opened these books yet to read them. Ooh. Don't hum, please, or I will have to unplug you. Um, in three weeks, we're going to do Bermuda, which who knows anything about Bermuda? Literally, all I know is where it is. Um, Nat Geo series. I love Nat Geo on G and Disney Plus. It's so great. Um, so I figure we could read this. Um, wow, the historical migration of Turkish peoples is very complex. They, they splintered off into different parts of Asia and Europe. Um, um, it, that's kind of a broad topic. It would be very interesting, though. I would love to do a, uh, just a triangle. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. Um, I would like to do a video on migrations. I would love to talk about the Bantu migration, too. Live on an island in the middle of the Pacific, please. <laughs> sounds great. Bermuda sounds great. Um, and then, are you ready for this? You're not ready for this. No one knows about this. I haven't told anyone that I have this country ready to go in the lineup. My Instagram followers don't know. My channel members don't know. You, you're all not ready. You're all not ready to see this. Ah, I'm so excited. Ah, can you, you can see, right? I'm so excited for Italy. And I haven't opened this yet. So I figure we can um, read through these a little bit, read all the boxes, and um, learn some stuff about Bermuda and maybe Italy. I literally have not opened this yet. Good old Italia. Italia. Um, when was this book written? My other book on Italy is from 2006, and it's a great book, but um, the government and politics chapter, I'm not going to read. <laughs> it's so outdated. This book is from 2014, so that's not that bad. All right. I, I shouldn't have to ask, but do you guys want to hear from Bermuda or Italy? <laughs> Two very different countries. 2006 was a long time ago. It doesn't seem like it, like for us as humans and our concept of time, but it was almost 20 years ago. Very nearly 20 years ago. Oh, was Luca? I haven't seen Luca. I'm sure it was very good. To me, mermaid movies are all the same. Bermuda is a country. I think we have to read Bermuda, guys. If you don't know, Bermuda is a country. We're going to have to read about Bermuda. <sighs> Two Italian fish boys. All mermaid movies are the same. It's all the same allegory. It's all the same symbolism. So, um, I, Mermaid stories are very one and the same to me. Let me move these out the way. <sighs> and it's like, if you're going to have a gay or trans parallels in your movies because usually that's what a lot of um mermaid symbolism is just show gay and trans people like we don't need mermaid stories anymore <laughs> yes bermuda is far less known and um yeah i wonder if there's a map in the back here that shows you guys where bermuda is because it's literally out in the middle of nowhere in the pacific like um i think we all associate Bermuda with the Caribbean, and it's straight up not in the Caribbean. It's kind of dark, but can you see the circle right there? That's where Bermuda is. It's in the Pacific Ocean. Like, it's, uh, like, east of, like, North Carolina. Like, it's in the Pacific, or not the Pacific, hello, the Atlantic. Hey, Krista, thanks for subbing. I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. I definitely meant the Atlantic Ocean, guys. I know, I know my oceans, I promise you. So let's, oh my gosh, look at this. 
And of course, on the Bermuda video, we'll go through and look at all the pictures, but I've literally not opened this book yet, so I don't know what's, what pictures are in here, but that's really pretty. You can see the coral. <sighs> <It's not laughs> yeah, my bad. I definitely meant Atlantic. All right. Let's read. This box says an unexpected discovery. In 1907, two young boys named Carl Gibbons and Edgar Hollis were playing cricket. A strong hit sent the ball rolling away. Maybe I'm going to do soft-spoken. A strong hit sent the ball rolling away. Suddenly, it disappeared down a mysterious hole. Following the ball, the two boys discovered some unbelievably huge and intricate underground limestone caves. Shaped like a gothic cathedral, these crystal caves, so called for the clear water inside them, are now a favorite tourist attraction in Bermuda. There are more <laughs> circle time. <laughs> there are more than 150 limestone caves scattered throughout Bermuda many of them reaching deep below sea level. Experts believe many of the caves date back to the Ice Age. Exploration in these caves has resulted in the discovery of 75 water and cave adapted species, including worms, mites, and crustaceans. Hey, Comics King. Thank you so much for researching Bermuda right now. I wonder, how Bermuda was formed if they've got limestone caves. What an interesting island formation. All right, endemic species of Bermuda. An endemic species is one that comes to a place naturally and then evolves into a unique form that is not found anywhere else. A clue that a species is endemic here is the addition to Bermuda to its name. That means that the species is only found in this unique archipelago. Bermuda's endemic plant species include trees like the, Bermudas, the Bermuda cedar, Bermuda palmetto, and Bermuda olive wood. Forest floors used to be covered with species such as Bermuda sedge, the moss Bermuda trichostoma, Bermuda maidenhair fern, and the shrub Bermuda snowberry. Flowers like the Bermudiana, it's pretty, um, still bloom on the island, and nature lovers may come across the Bermuda buckeye butterfly, the archipelago's only endemic butterfly. The Bermuda skink is the island's historic lizard resident. Um, the Bermuda petrel is more commonly known as a kahow, a kahow, a petrel, so it's like a little uh, raptor. Uh, since the 1950s, it has made a miraculous recovery from near extinction thanks to dedicated conservation projects. That's good. Let's see, what else can we learn? Spittle Pod Nature Reserve. Hmm. Many call Spittle Pod, Spittle Pond, I'm sorry. Hey, Krista, welcome. Um, many call Spittle Pond Nature Reserve in Smith's Parish with its rocky shores, salt marsh habitat, mudland flats, and leafy trails, the most beautiful place in Bermuda. It is Bermuda's largest nature reserve spanning 64 acres, or 26 hectares. About 20 bird species live in the wetland habitat, including waterfowl like herons, sandpipers, and egrets. More than 200 other bird species feed in the area during their yearly migration. Visitors might also catch a glimpse of two of Bermuda's endemic species, which we already talked about, the Bermuda buckeye butterfly and the Bermuda skink. The main pond at the reserve contains brackish water. Fresh water turns brackish when storms or floods send salt water into the pond. Black mangroves grow along the main pond, thriving in this habitat. A geological formation known as the checkerboard is also part of the reserve. The pressures of plate tectonics have resulted in a checkerboard of fractured limestone. How interesting. 
it's getting hot again, even though it's a cool evening. Um, let me find like a, that's a shopping bag. That will do. My goodness, I am so sorry. Holy moly, good morning. <laughs> if anyone's still awake, I am so sorry about that. My microphone just ran into the fridge. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was the loudest thing ever. Let's not let that happen ever again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Let's put this up here. Okay. My goodness, why? Okay, that's my friend texting me. She's going to have to wait. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and there goes a the card with music. I greatly apologize. Oh my gosh. Look at this man. Look at this statue of this man. Can you see his face? He's so happy. Apparently, he founded the colony on Bermuda when his ship was wrecked on the island in 1609. My house is not equipped for ASMR, let's be real. I live across from a school, which has school noises. <laughs> he does look like one of the seven dwarfs. I live near a BART station, so you hear the train going by. I live on a very busy street, so there's always cars. The walls are thin, and many people live in this building. The chickens are outside. It's just a noisy place, and it was one of the reasons that I always thought I could never do ASMR, because I thought I needed to live in a more quiet place, but I just went and did it anyway. And, um, yeah, I'm just living my best life. I always wanted to do ASMR. This says Portuguese rock. Let's see what it says. I have a hair in my mouth. I have barely any hair. It's because I just like wipe my face with that old shirt. One of the earliest landings. Hey, I'll win. Welcome. One of the earliest landings in Bermuda was recorded in a cliffside rock carving. Uh, okay. Yeah, I kind of. Um, the inscription includes the year 1543, two initials, and a cross. The initials have been inscripted as RP, likely stand for the Latin words Rex Portugalia, or King of Portugal. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you're getting tingles, Krista. The cross resembles that of the Portuguese Order of Christ. Historians believe the rock was carved by sailors from a Portuguese slave ship that crashed on the nearby reefs. Survivors lived on the island while they constructed a small seaworthy vessel made from salvaged ship materials and turtle shells. After leaving their mark on Bermuda, the remaining crew sailed for Puerto Rico. The landmark was long called Spanish Rock due to a misunderstanding of its inscription. It was renamed Portuguese Rock in 2009. Although the original rock is no longer in place, what do they do with it? A bronze cast of the inscription can be visited in Spittal Pond. How interesting. Has anyone lived on Bermuda before that? Nope, they were uninhabited. I mean, they are out in the middle of the ocean, so I'm not surprised. But One of those places that no one lived on until the Europeans found it. How interesting. This says, a letter from George Washington. I'm sorry about the text. <laughs> um, George Washington sent his own request for gunpowder to Bermuda on September 6th, 1775. And then here's the letter. We are informed there is a very large magazine in your island under a very feeble guard. We knew not, therefore, to what extent to solicit your assistance in availing ourselves of this supply. But if your favor and friendship to North America and its liberties have not been misrepresented, I persuade myself you may, consistent with your own safety, promote and further this scheme so as to give it the fairest prospect of success. Be assured that in this case, the whole power and execution of my influence will be made with the Honorable Continental Congress, that your island may not only be supplied with provisions, but experience every other mark of affection and friendship. 
with the grateful citizens of a free country can bestow on its brethren and benefactors. That was a, the fanciest way of saying, can we have your gunpowder? <laughs> Promise we'll give you something nice in return. And George should just be like, can I have your gunpowder, please? That's all that letter said. Oh, George. <laughs> The words of Mary Prince. Mary Prince published her autobiography, The History of Mary Prince, a West Indian Slave Narrative, in 1831. She was the first Black woman to publish a book in Britain. In it, Prince wrote, here's another quote, Oh, the horrors of slavery, how the thought of it pains my heart. But the truth ought to be told of it, and what my eyes have seen I think it is my duty to relate. For few people in England know what slavery is. I have been a slave. I have felt what a slave feels, and I know what a slave knows. And I would have all the good people in England to know it too, that they break our chains and set us free. Very well written, my goodness. Um, yeah, the, the, the live, I thought it was going to go on for like an hour or so before I fell asleep, but I literally just didn't get tired. Um, I did fall asleep after the stream though. So there's that. Um, that probably is not going to happen again anytime soon. <laughs> I was just feeling really down that night and I just needed someone to talk to. So okay, I got to turn my phone off because she's texting me nonstop friend drama. <laughs> there we go. I feel bad, but I'll, I'll be there for her in a minute. Unexpected crisis. Oh, it's a paragraph about COVID. Let's see. The greatest challenge to Bermuda in the 21st century has been the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, yeah, interesting. <laughs> it's cool, these books that were published this year that have COVID facts, but um, Kibum? Kibum? Kibum. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah. Um, they, they all end with 2021 facts where it's like Bermuda's hopeful that they'll pull through the COVID pandemic. But I mean, you can only update so much, right? Let's learn about Bermudan citizenship. Bermudan citizenship is difficult to attain. Even children, oh my gosh, hey Lainey, hi, it's been forever, how are you? Even children born in Bermuda are not officially Bermudian unless one parent is native to the country. There's very few countries like that nowadays. No outsider can become a Bermudian, gain citizenship, vote, or buy real estate unless they marry a Bermudian and live with that person for more than 10 years. Um, I don't have the energy to read Korean right now. Hanguki Seo. Do I speak Korean? Not really. <laughs> Not really. Um, since 2002. Oh, yeah. See, like, this is the only democratic country in the world with these rules. I wonder why. Since 2002, Bermudian citizens have been automatically granted full British citizenship by the British Overseas Territories Act. This means that native Bermudians can more easily study, work, and live in Britain. Naturalized Bermudians, those who have gained citizenship through marriage, are eligible, but they have to apply for British citizenship. So, obviously, if both your parents are Bermudian and you're born on Bermuda, you're a Bermudian citizen. But, like, that's, like, the only way to guarantee your Bermudian citizenship. That's really wild. It's so complicated. <laughs> um, on the basis of race and sex, let's see this. 
Black men in Bermuda who owned property were able to vote and occupy elected offices at a time when all women, black or white, were barred from voting. Bermudian, I know it sounds wrong. Bermudan sounds right. <laughs> Apparently it's Bermudian. Um, some black politicians like Dr. Eustace McCann in the House of Assembly worried that opening the vote to property-owning women would only cement the harmful property requirements. <laughs> what? However, McCann voted to pass the Women's Suffrage Bill in 1944. Hey, Proto, I'm doing okay. It's it's still pretty hot. Let me get some water. Um, I'm all right. I'm better than I was this morning. <laughs> I got some good sleep, finally. Now it's evening, which that's fine. I'm a vampire now. I'm nocturnal now, apparently. Um... And why don't we read some Italy facts? It's interesting about Bermuda. I didn't know it was uninhabited until the, I guess English settled it, but that Portuguese ship was on there for a minute, huh? Ugh, I'm being strangled. Give it there. Let's read about Italy. Um, let's see. I'm so excited to do Italy. Two jobs and going to school. My goodness, that's exhausting. I've done that before. It's very, very tiring. Getting money, of course, yeah. <laughs> Dolomites, mountains. Oh, let's play a game. I will say the city in Italian, and you tell me... Um, what it is in English. Right now I'm going to research Italy. I'm just researching countries that are coming up. Okay, so I, I hope you're up for a little trivia. I mean, I put it in the title, so. Um, Firenze. What city is Firenze? You already failed. Don't say that. Firenze. Think. You know Italian cities. Everyone does. Even if you don't think you know it, you know it. Firenze. Who knows? How about Milano? Yeah, it is Florence. Milano. Milano. That one's kind of easy. <laughs> Milano. Milan, yes, exactly. How about Venezia? Yeah, Milan. Venezia. <laughs> Caleb's played Assassin's Creed. Yeah, good old Assassin's Creed. I love all the history in those games. Yeah, Venice is Venezia. Um, how about Napoli? This will be the last one. Napoli. I was probably Napoli. <laughs> you didn't fail, see? You're smarter than you know everyone is. Yeah, Naples, exactly, lady. It's Naples. We'll let it go there. Naples. Yeah, see, like, people, you know, you know stuff. You just don't think you know stuff until you're presented with it. Don't worry about it. Neopolis. Yeah. Let's, let's read about the Leaning Tower. Why not? Um, one of the most famous landmarks in Italy is located in the town of Pisa in Tuscany. Hey, Richie, welcome. Um, in Tuscany, a region of north central Italy, it is a beautiful bell tower built near the Pisa Cathedral. Work began on the tower in the year 1173. It started leaning to the northwest even as it was being built because the soil beneath it was unstable. Work stopped for a century. When construction began again, the soil settled more and the tower began to tilt to the north. Work stopped for another century, my gosh, um, and the tower continued to shift. By the time construction started once more, the tower was leaning to the south. <laughs> Over the centuries, architects tried many ways to keep the tower from tilting further. At that point, just dismantle it. <laughs> Try again later. Like, 
my goodness, they were very determined to build this tower. The tower was closed to the public in 1990 when a similar tower in the town of Pavia collapsed. In an effort to preserve the tower in Pisa, soil was moved from under the side that was too high. Cables are often placed around the tower to stabilize it, and the heavy bells atop the tower were removed. It was reopened to the public in 2001. Yeah, like, um, no single generation would ever see their work. That's so true. Indigenous people of Mexico, I have. I have a really cool video about um, the Aztecs and um, their lives before the Europeans came. Their gods and all of that. It, it was fun to do, learning how to say Nahuatl stuff. But yeah, um, so many famous buildings um, were designed by architects who did not live to see their finished product because it would take like 80 years to build. Uh, oh, cool. Discovering a plot to straighten it completely. That's awesome. That's a fun story. Um, yeah, I think about um, Sagrada Familia in uh, Barcelona, that church. Apparently it's going to be done in 10 years, so which, um, like, one of the famous facts about it is that it, it's never been completed, but apparently they're, they're on track to finish it in, like, 2030, so, like, eight years at this point. In Barcelona Cathedral, yeah, I think that's the most famous unfinished building in the world right now, next to the, um, what's it called in Saudi Arabia, the, um, the uh, Jebel, not Jebel, I don't know, Al, Al Jama building? I'm not sure. I forget what it's called, but construction on that's been halted um, for a variety of reasons, and then COVID happened, and I don't think it's ever been finished. Um, but it's going to be, if it ever is finished, it's supposed to be taller than the Burj Khalifa. We'll see. It starts with a J. I can't remember what they've called it. Let's see what else. Oh, Vesuvius. Jetta Tower. Thank you, Callum. I knew it started with the J. The Jetta Tower. Dr. Pickle knew it too. You guys are so smart. Yeah. The Jetta Tower is supposed to be slightly higher than the Burj Khalifa and Saudi Arabia is only building it to try to outdo the Burj Khalifa, which like, why at this point? Like, why do we need gigantic buildings? Like, they're, at that point, they're not even functional. Apparently, most of the Burj Khalifa doesn't have functioning toilets because they just can't make plumbing that long. <laughs> it's like, what's the point? Um, Arab, yeah, it's, <laughs> the Arab states all have to be better than the other. It's so funny. You're going to learn about um, Bahrain tomorrow and Qatar on Friday and that whole rivalry that's been going on for like 300 years. <laughs> Uh, but thankfully, they're not really trying to outbuild each other. They're just trying to, like, out-glamorize each other. Yeah, France bans skyscrapers. A lot of European cities do just because they have so many historical buildings. They don't want their skylines ruined with huge, huge skyscrapers. They have so many beautiful buildings as it is. Like, why would they do that? Meanwhile, London. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Let me go down 20 levels to go to the bathroom. Exactly. Like, let me catch the elevator for two minutes <laughs> and hold it during all that time. Oh, that I didn't know that. London has a rule. You have to be able to see St. Paul's from a few. Oh, interesting. That's why the shard is a wedge. Oh, I did not know that. How interesting. But I like that because St. Paul's is one of those very, very iconic London things, you know. Let's read about Vesuvius. In 79 CE, Mount Vesuvius exploded with a massive eruption. Hot ash, stone, and gas smothered the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Resort towns where the elites among the ancient Romans went to enjoy the seaside. About 16,000 people died in the eruptions. These historic cities were not rediscovered until 1748. Since then, most of the buildings and many skeletons have been uncovered. 
apparently it's a very, very interesting place to visit. I can't, I can't imagine. Oh, that must be so eerie. Um, but yeah. Um, let's play another city game. It says Rome is the capital of Italy and the largest city. What do you think is the second largest city in Italy? It has a population of 2,962,000. It's the nation's commercial and industrial capital. And it's also the fashion capital of the world. Armani, Versace, Missoni, and Prada are among the design houses located here. And if I say any more about the building, it's going to give away what city it is. What city do you think that is? Not Florence. That's more of an artsy city than um, um, fashion. Um, um, Callum, it's one of those. It's one of those, Callum. Which one do you think it is? Fashion capital of the world. Phew. I'd open up my other big window, but not generally. It's Milan. <laughs> it's Milan. Good guess, though. Um, but before I started this, um, so many loud cars went by, so I just closed the window. Yeah, exactly. Milan is the fashion capital in the world. Let's see. The third largest city in Italy has a population of 2,270,000. It is an important world port your hint. Only Hong Kong, China has more people passing through its port each year. It was originally settled by the Greeks 3,000 years ago. Today, the city is filled with historic buildings. The Hoking Castel Nuovo, which dates from the 1200s, overlooks the bay. Hundreds of historic churches line the city's narrow streets. Um, among the most important are the Cathedral of Blank the name of the city, and the church of Santa Chiara. What city do you think it is? It is Naples. Callum's on it tonight. Good job, Callum. It is Naples. All right. Um, the fourth largest city. Let's see if anyone gets this. The fourth largest city with a population of about 1,662,000. Uh, the city was the center of activity leading to the unification of Italy, and it served as the capital of the new country from 1861 to 1865. Like Milan, it's now an industrial and business city. It is the center of Italy's manufacturing industries, particularly of automobiles. The city is famous for the Shroud of Blank, a piece of linen that many people, not Marinello, good guess, um, a piece of linen that many people believe once covered the body of Christ. It's on display at San Giovanni Battista Cathedral. The Shroud of Name of City. <laughs> Anyone know? I should also say um, the last Olympics in Italy was held, was hosted, I should say, by this city also. The Winter Olympics. If anybody knows. Lots of history to that city. I knew there was, but I didn't know how deep it went. Pretty much, I only really knew about the Shroud uh, before the Olympics happened there. Turin, yes, it is Turin or Torino. Turin, great job. Lainey, don't worry, you're in the right place to learn more about geography. Totally, totally fine. Fiat has Turin, yeah, like Torino, like, yeah. Automobile industry. That was another big hint in the in the thing there. The national animal of Italy is the Italian wolf. It's a subspecies of the common gray wolf. Interesting. Um, let's see what else. Ooh. Interesting. I was reading about thinking of Ferrari. All the cars. <laughs> Turin's very famous for its car industry. Um, 
I was I was looking at Venice. Venice is a place that I'm like desperate to go. When I tutored ages ago, this was so many years ago. I was tutoring at an elementary school, and um, this this kid I was tutoring just wasn't interested in the geography I was trying to teach him. And he saw a picture of Venice, and he's like, "Oh, that's not real." He thought it was like a fairy tale. Ferraris from Marinello. Gotcha. Um, and he said, that place isn't real. That's that's a drawing. It was a drawing, by the way. So he's like, that's not real. I'm like, it is. There's a place in Italy where they don't have roads. It's all water and they get around by boats. And he was like, what? Like he was probably nine years old. He was what? I'm like, yeah, that's true. Like this isn't made up. There's a place in Italy. They don't have roads. It's all water and they get around by boat. And he was just kind of quiet thinking about it. And he was like, I want to go see that. And I was like, yeah, me too. And then he got really into the the lesson. So um, uh, there's been always a little soft spot about Venice in my heart because of that. I, I sparked someone a little bit that day, that little boy. That was, I think, one of the first tutoring jobs I ever had, actually. It's what got me into tutoring. Yeah, it's, it was really sweet. Let's see. Birth of Rome. The ancient Romans believe their civilization was started by 753 BCE by twin brothers, the sons of the gods Mars and a priestess. The infant boys Romulus and Remus were abandoned in the Tiber River. And to make this a trivia, what or how were they raised? as babies who took care of them when they were babies after they abandoned when they were abandoned i should say who knows it's there's a very famous statue of it and it's one of the legends of rome who took in these two twin baby boys and raised them venice is definitely up there i agree i want to go see venice it just seems so beautiful i don't think there is an ugly part of venice anywhere like architecturally <laughs> I really hope that global warming doesn't do anything horrific to that city because it's just so lovely. Suckled on a she-wolf. Yes, Callum. Callum knows a lot of Italian facts. Not creepy at all, no. If you've never seen the statue, um, some wolf, yeah, a she-wolf, there's the famous statue. Romulus and Remus getting some milk from the wolf. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there's Cleopatra. It's interesting to see depictions of blonde Cleopatra. Yeah, it's an Animal Crossing too. <laughs> um, because Cleopatra was Greek. Like, she was an Egyptian queen, but her family was Greek. So she very likely had fair hair and kind of like, you know, Greek features. Um I think a lot of people think of her as looking like Egyptian with like the black short hair and all that, but oh, she was she was Greek. Um, let's see, the Lombards capturing Italy, the Papal States. We're going to talk about um, Greeks can be blonde, yeah. <laughs> Waifu breaks, they sure can. Marco Polo. Been reading about Marco Polo, who um. Stayed for a long time in a country. Yeah, red is a very sus person. <laughs> um, I, I finally got the statue of David in my game. And I was so happy when I saw him. I was like, red, give me, give me David. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to read a, a biography. Ramsey's the second was a redhead. Interesting. Famous redheads in history. <laughs> I'm going to read a biography. You have to tell me who this is, okay? This person was born in Pisa near Florence. He's sometimes called the father of modern science. After learning excuse me, about the Dutch invention of the telescope in 1608, he built his own the following year. I'm just going to keep going until someone gets it. Someone's going to get it. Um, he used it to discover that there is more to the universe than people could see. 
he soon discovered the four largest moons of planet Jupiter. Yeah, J.D. Long got its Galileo. Discovered the four largest moons of Jupiter. So on and so forth until um, he was excommunicated. And they mentioned here that the church apologized in 1992 to Galileo because he was obviously correct. <laughs> Let's see what else. There's Garibaldi, Mussolini. What is fascism? That's going to be fun. <laughs> The Italian Resistance, World War II, um, Berlusconi. Anyway, <laughs> the history chapter. Let's see. Um, and after Benito Juarez. Wow, I didn't know that. Um, this is a page about Rome. But I don't know if I can make any um, trivia questions out of this. If you want, we can transfer over to trivia because I do have trivia questions for you guys. Let me look through. Let me know what you think. I've got two quizzes. One is just a capital cities quiz, easy peasy, and the other is a geography quiz. I just look through this because, again, like I said at the start, I haven't even opened this book. Love some trivia. Fire away. Okay. Sounds good. Um, what quiz would you like to participate in? I've got my notepad here. You might be able to hear my landlady outside working on something. Um, yeah, I've got capital cities and geography questions. And they're on this, this crinkly notepads. My, um, my work years ago, like I want to say 20... 17 or 18, um, got these, uh, one of our locations was in Texas and there was a hurricane and their building was damaged irreparably. So they closed and our store in California was the nearest store. So they sent us all their supplies that were still good. Boxes upon boxes of these notepads. I was like, I'll take them. I always need paper. So I still have like five of these I've never used. But um, one of these notepads I uh, I used to map out my country list for my channel. It's somewhere in a drawer over there. <laughs> All right. Lainey says geography. Got to learn it one way. True. All right. Um. My goodness, there's a there's like a mixture of easy, medium, and hard. And I will say that if you don't know and nobody knows, please Google it and find out and put it in the chat because um, I don't consider that cheating anymore. I figure I'd rather have you learn something and look it up yourself and learn it than just to say, I don't know, and then sit there. Um, look it up if you don't know. <laughs> so... First question, what river runs through the city of Prague? What's the name of the river that runs through the city of Prague? These are all geography questions on um, countries that I've already covered on my channel, by the way. So it is not the Danube. I think the Danube does go through Czechia, but not through Prague. Not the Rhine. That's a very good guess. Waifu breaks. Very good guess, but that is not it. It is a very unusual name, but I think it's really fun to say. <laughs> and um, maybe a little hard to spell in English. But um, yeah, this is, this is kind of one of the harder ones because it's a very lesser known river in Europe. It is not the Volga, but you are very close. It starts with a V. Again, if you don't know, just Google it. Just go open another window on whatever you're on and type in river in Prague. And I'm not even gonna try to say that. Well, don't say it, type it, dude. My accent came out a little bit there. <laughs> I sound like a drooler. Uh, Voltava, yes, Voltava, excellent. See, now you've learned about the Voltava River. It's pronounced Voltava, yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting one, the Voltava. All right, next question is, um, Google is our friend tonight. If you don't know, just Google, because then you'll learn something. We can, we can have a fastest Googler award. 
If you know what Haiti looks like, it's kind of shaped like this on half of the island of Hispaniola. So there's two big peninsulas and a huge gulf in the middle. What's the name of that gulf? Who knows? There's some islands. There's a big island right about here that's named after the gulf. Yeah, I'm Polish is so, I've been working so hard. I'm Polish. What's the name of the huge gulf in Haiti? It's like this. It's not shaped perfectly like a crescent. I think this it's it's more like this. But um, who knows? Gonav. Yes, not the Gulf of Mexico, Victoria. But that's a very good guess. <laughs> it is the Gulf of Gonav, Christian. Got it. Great job. The Gulf of Gonav. Um, the capital of Myanmar is a, um, a... There's my fridge. Don't worry about it. A um, Geneva. That's close. Um, Gonav, it's pretty um, the capital of Myanmar is one of those planned capital cities now. It's called Naypyitaw. I think it was finished in 2011. What was the name of the city that was the former capital of Myanmar slash Burma? And you can give its colonizer name or the, Bur the Burmese name. Yangon, there it is. Why oh, forgot it? Yangon, exactly. Rangoon is the colonizer name, but yep, there you go. We got Yangon and Rangoon. It was Yangon. Um, I'm going to skip around and try to find a little easier one. Which two countries border Kuwait? Which two countries border Kuwait? Yeah, Rangoon's the British name for it. It's, it's officially Yangon now. Iraq is one, not Iran. Iraq very famously <laughs> borders Kuwait. They had a whole war about it when Iraq tried to annex Kuwait. But, um... What's the other country? Um, not the UAE. Um, Iraq and Saudi Arabia. Christian got it. It's Iraq, not Jordan. Iraq and Saudi Arabia are the two countries that border Kuwait. Um, there is a lake in the Dominican Republic. It is the lowest point in the Dominican Republic. And this lake is doing something very unusual that a lot of lakes in the world don't do. Who knows what it is? What is this lake doing? It's Lake Enriquillo, by the way, um, in the Dominican Republic that's experiencing a very unusual phenomenon. What is it? It's um, almost kind of the opposite of what a lot of major bodies of water have been doing around the world. It's, it's not exploding, Callum. Um, it's, it's not volcanic, I should say. It's growing, yeah. It's slowly, uh, David Ortiz hit a ball there. I'm not surprised, it sounds like something David Ortiz would do. Yeah, the lake is expanding and growing and rising. The, the water level in this lake is rising. And from what I can tell, nobody really knows why, but a lot of people have had to move. I think it's wrecked like two different towns. It's flooded them. The lake is rising. Very interesting, right? Bosnia and Herzegovina has three regions to it. One is Bosnia. One is Herzegovina. What is the third? Bosnia and Herzegovina has three like regions. Bosnia, Herzegovina, and what is the third one? Errol C needs to listen in, right? It's not it's not Croatian, it's Serbian. He talked about having Tourette's. Yeah. Um, oh, good job, Malum Republika Srpska. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, it's the Serbian corner of the B and H. Yeah. Republika Srpska, it's called. Not Kosovo. Not not Kosovo. Kosovo's different. Kosovo is its own thing. We'll talk about that later. Tourette's is very unusual in that I feel it coming on like a sneeze and um, I can't really hold it back sometimes. If I talk about it, it's going to happen. So you're going to see ticks start to come out. Um, I tick all the time, but it's very tiny. It's usually just little head wiggles or you see me whenever I'm like, excuse me like that. That's a tick. Um, and it's, it's very imperative. I'm trying to work with a 
neurologist and my psychiatrist to get me on full-time disability because it um, it gets worse the, the more stressed I am. So whenever I'm at work, I'm just ticking nonstop. So um, when I'm at home, relaxed in my safety place, it doesn't really happen as much. But um, if like a tiny modicum of stress appears, I'll start ticking. So it's... Um, gonna start happening soon I can feel my eyes starting to twitch um but yeah it's very annoying <laughs> and um I get some stares and uh but nobody's ever like asked like are you okay they just let me be which is kind of nice I feel like people know what Tourette's is you know when I was last in the pharmacy I was having so many ticks I was literally just standing there in the line just non-stop like grunting and wiggling and twitching and everyone was staring at me it was so awkward but what else can I do you know I'm gonna start some medication soon to help with the ticks and um I have a referral for um therapy like physical therapy I guess cognitive slash physical but I haven't heard back from the referral yet so that is what life with Tourette's is like I do want to visit Serbia too Serbia sounds lovely Serbians the people sound lovely. If Doomchita's still here, they'll know. What's the largest island in South Korea? If you've seen Squid Games, you probably know the answer too. <laughs> it kind of came up in the plot. What's the largest island in South Korea? Who knows? Who knows? It's a big Jeju. Yes, waifu. It's Jeju Island. Good job. It's, it's like the vacation. Yep. Jeju. Good job, Will. It is Jeju Island. That is what it's called. And that's the closest English spelling that it is in Hungar. So, um, Ghana in Africa is home to the world's largest man made lake. What is it called? The world's largest man made lake. Who knows what lake it is? You forgot. Volta. Good job, Christian. That was a little loud. It is Lake Volta, the world's largest man-made lake. And it's one of those where you look at a map because Africa is so big and you see little Ghana with a little lake and you're like, oh, that's tiny. That's the largest one. But it's huge. It's huge. It is not Lake Ghana. <laughs> it is not Lake Ghana. Um, Lithuania is bordered by which Russian exclave? An exclave being a piece of land that is separated by um, another country. Yeah, Volta is named after the rivers. Um, Burkina Faso used to be called Upper Volta. Will got it with Kaliningrad. Wife who got it, Kaliningrad. Kaliningrad, good job, you guys. Uh, and Konigsberg, even the English name. Good job, Callum. And Kaliningrad, good job, you guys. Konigsberg, well, look at you guys. Yes. Um... What animal went extinct on Mauritius? I talked about it a lot in my Mauritius video. It's the coolest fact about it. What animal went extinct on Mauritius due to the Europeans hunting it? Why who got it? It's the dodo. And Will got it. The dodo bird. The It wasn't habited. It was uninhabited when the Europeans arrived. These huge giant chicken birds were just walking up to them with no fear. So they killed them and ate them. And apparently their eggs were delicious. I know, Victoria, isn't it fun? Their eggs were apparently amazing. So they were eaten to death by people. And they went extinct. It was the only place in the world where the dodos lived. It was on Mauritius, which is an island in the Indian Ocean off of Africa. Um, there's a very famous film site in Tunisia for the Star Wars movies what town was, especially the first Star Wars movie, what town in Tunisia was Star Wars filmed in? What town in Tunisia, like southern Tunisia, was Star Wars? Yep, Tatooine, yes. And then they named the planet Tatooine. Not Carthage, that would have been kind of cool. Um, Tatooine is the name of this town. And then they named the, um, it's it's the same. It's Tatu, I'll, I'll type it, how it's actually spelled. It's spelled like this. Yeah. No. 
There we go. It's spelled like that, but it's pronounced Tatooine. And then the planet in Star Wars is named Tatooine, like how Callum spelled it. Isn't that neat? <laughs> and it's all still there. You can go see um, Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru's farm is still there in the desert. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and they filmed Moss Eisley there. Moss Eisley is still there. You can go and see Moss Eisley and all the different Tatooine scenes from the first movie. Isn't that neat? Um, the Namib Desert the coolest desert in the world is on the, I love Star Wars too, it's my favorite, is on the coast of Namibia bordering the Atlantic Ocean. It is one of the few, if not the only, um, yeah, they did reuse them, um, coastal deserts. What is its nickname that it's infamous for? What's the nickname for the Namib Desert? I mean, its official name is Namib Desert, but um, it has a, a popular nickname that alludes to just how dangerous this desert can be because it's uh, pretty treacherous. Um, not hell, waifu. <laughs> it's not hell. It's a beautiful desert. It's just completely barren. It's sand dunes upon sand dunes, massive, massive sand dunes in this desert. And it's just so eerie because it's right along the coastline. So it's literally like ocean, little beach, sand dunes. Ooh, sorry, microphone. It's so eerie. You can't remember. That's okay. You can feel free to Google if you want. It is something about death. For um, It's named after its shipwrecks. And um, hey, Brandon. Hi. Callum got it. It is the Skeleton Coast. Yes. It is the skeleton coast because of the multiple shipwrecks. So there's skeletons of ships along the shore still. Kind of like Gold Coast and Ivory Coast, yeah. Um, but it's also the skeleton coast because if you disembark and try to cross the desert, you will become a skeleton. <laughs> What's the largest island in Greece? What's the largest island in Greece? There's like, oh, wow, waifu got it right away with Crete. Good job. It's Crete. I thought that would be tricky. Crete. Yep. You guys got it. Good job. Because there's so many different islands that belong to Greece. You guys got it right away. Good job. It is Crete. Oh, your friend's Greek. That's awesome. What's the name of the massive mangrove swamp in Bangladesh that's home to man-eating tigers? Yeah, Rhodes is also very big. Crete is cool. It's a new place. It's so beautiful. What's the name of the massive mangrove swamp in Bangladesh that's home to man-eating tigers? And it's a national park. It's located within Bangladesh and India, I should say, but mostly in Bangladesh. Who knows what it's called? And it's a weird pronunciation, so don't worry about that. You can just, All you have to do is just write it, so it's all good. It's a gigantic mangrove swamp. Um, the Shunderbund. Yes, Cold Spectre. Good job. It spelled it phonetically. <laughs> it is the Shunderbund. The Shunderbund National Park where locals have to fend off literal man-eating tigers. What's the largest mountain range in Iran? What's the largest mountain range in Iran? Let me get a drink. What's the largest mountain range in Iran? Victoria got it. It's the Zagros Mountains. The Zagros Mountains. Lots and lots of history in those mountains. It's pretty much where like the Persian culture began. Yeah, it's the Zagros Mountains. Um, Let's see. Okay, this one might be inaccurate. I wrote it down from memory and I researched it a little, but I didn't really guarantee or like confirm it. So if anyone knows more about it than me, can help me out. But I wrote down that Syria is home to the oldest inhabited capital city, Damascus, but it's also home to the world's longest inhabited city, period, 
What city is it? Damascus, the capital of Syria, is the um, world's longest inhabited capital city. But what's the oldest inhabited city? Aleppo, yeah. Wife who got it, it's Aleppo. See, now, I feel like that's debatable with Jericho, which is in Israel now. Um, but I feel like Aleppo has been inhabited longer than Jericho. I'm pretty sure I've read that somewhere. So I definitely need to double check that fact. I've always thought it was Aleppo. And then I started reading some conflicting sources. So like 95% sure it's Aleppo. What river makes up the northern border of Zimbabwe? Yeah, they're both very old. <laughs> what river makes up the northern, nope, constant habitation, meaning people have been living there in that city and calling it that name for the longest time. Zambezi, wife who got it. It's the Zambezi River. Good job. The Zambezi River. Turkey has, good job, Zambezi, yes. Turkey is home to an interesting place known as Cappadocia, which is full of interesting rock formations called hoodoos, what is the other common English nickname for the hoodoos? Rhodesia was wild, huh? My fridge is having a loud hum right now. I'm sorry. I'll go and plug it if anyone's bothered. Um, there it goes. What's the, um, like an English nickname for the hoodoos? You can't, well, just shut off. So don't worry about that. Um, it's, it's what they're more commonly known other than hoodoos. I think in America though, they're called hoodoos because hoodoos can be found on every continent, but, um, particularly in Cappadocia, what are, what's a, a more kind of, um, fantasy like name for these incredible rock formations. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? don't know another name for them spiky dirt spike things. <laughs> there we go. J.D. Long got it. Fairy chimney is what they're kind of more commonly called around the world. Chimneys. Yeah. Fairy chimneys is what they're typically called. Hoodoos is like their, I guess, scientific -y sounding name. Fairy chimneys. Isn't that sweet? Um, what hill in Ireland is considered a sacred home of mythological creatures. What hill in Ireland? It's my favorite place to learn about Nauru. <laughs> Nauru is wild. You can see my video on it if you want to learn more. This channel exists because of Nauru. Um, what hill in Ireland? Hey, Ludmila, welcome. I've got a geography quiz that I made for you guys. So, What hill in Ireland is home um, it's been a rough day. I'm sorry, Ludmila. I'm glad I'm here for you. It's been a, it's been a, a rough week for me. <laughs> um, a sacred hill in Ireland that's home to Irish mythical beings. What is that hill? Anyone who knows their Irish mythology or anyone who's read the Artemis Fowl books will know it's a real place. It is Tara. Good job, J.D. Long. It's Tara. Who? Callum even got the... Um, Irish name, Tara. Tara, yes. Good job, you guys. It is Tara. Um, the capital of Sierra Leone is Freetown. Sierra Leone's in Western Africa. Sierra Leone was, um, created by freed slaves from mostly America, some parts of Canada, but mostly America. They sailed to Africa, landed in this area, and um which they named freetown the little town that they made and they gathered around certain something and prayed around it and that thing this natural thing is still there and people pray around it for good luck all the time what is it um i will say it's a plant i'll say what plant is it they gathered around this plant and prayed for the success of their colony and it is still there, and people still go there to pray for good luck all the time. Who knows what it is?
I keep thinking my, my history quiz that I made, the Sierra Leone question is, where was the first president born? And I can't remember. I'm trying to think. I want to say Virginia or Massachusetts. I can't remember. But um, yeah, who knows? I know this is kind of like an obscure African fact, but um, it's a very important part of the town. Even when there's been civil wars and people bombing and taking over the capital, they've left this alone, thank God thankfully, because it's such an important part of the history. So it's still there. It's still intact. It hasn't been damaged from any of the civil wars, thankfully, it's, and violent military coups or anything. Who knows? Who knows what it is? I assume it's quiet either because I'm lagging really bad. Rough week. Oh, my cat died. <laughs> That's the long and the short of it. Wife who got it. It's a cotton tree. Yes. Ahoy. be Viterute, viterute. Um, yeah, it's a cotton tree. Why I forgot it? The cotton tree. It's still there. It's a huge tree. Google wasn't helping. Oh dear. <laughs> um, yeah, Sierra Leone was founded by slaves, and so was Liberia. Um, but yeah. Um, 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 um. What's the name of the mysterious forest in Romania? that has been the home of various paranormal and alien sightings. Yes. Yes, yeah, Sierra Leone's an interesting place. Uh, not Carpathian. It's probably the mountains that they're in. It has this, this forest has an actual name. It's very infamous in Romania for being um, UFOs have been spotted there, floating orbs, apparitions, um, yeah, it's a it's a really easy name. That's why I included it. <laughs> but um, it's it's a apparently a severely haunted haunted forest. Who knows what it's called? There we go. JD Long got it. It is Hoya Forest. Hoya Lini got it too. Hoya. Yes, it is the Hoya Forest. It's apparently very eerie, 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 eerie. Mm, easy one. What's the lowest point above sea level? In the, well, not above sea level, but above the ocean on Earth, located in Israel and Jordan. What's the lowest point on the surface of the Earth? Well, we got it. Dead Sea. Dead Sea. Yeah, I threw in, I threw in some easy ones in this list just because there's some hard ones. Um, the Living Sea. Why, for you, you're funny. Ha ha ha. It is the Dead Sea because nothing can live in it because it's too salty. They would die. Paraguay in South America is sometimes referred to as an island, even though it is completely landlocked. Why is that? Why is Paraguay sometimes joked that it is an island, despite it being completely landlocked? It does not have an ocean border. Udmila got it. There are rivers on all sides of it. Yep, well, it's surrounded by rivers. All the borders of Paraguay are rivers. So it, it's an island. Um, very interesting. What's the highest peak in Cameroon? If you don't know this, you're going to know it forever after this. Paraguay is like the meme country of South America. <laughs> That's for sure. That, that place is wild. I'm so glad I got that country first in South America. What's the highest peak in Cameroon? This one's actually very easy, and you don't even know how easy it is. It's actually ex extremely easy. What's the name of the... It's a very active volcano, too, I should say. Mount Cameroon. Yes, Christian. <laughs> now, you always know the highest peak in Cameroon is Mount Cameroon. That's, that's a fact you get to have for the rest of your life. You'll always know. Paraguay and Uruguay are very different places. Like, very different. Uruguay is a small one. They're like a beach culture and um, farming in the middle. And waifu got it. Paraguay is the crazy one. That's a weird country. <laughs> they have a bizarre history. But yeah, the, the names are very similar, but the countries are vastly different, like worlds apart. Um, what, do you know why it's, it's a Spanish thing? <laughs> I don't know enough about Spanish to, um, break down what those words mean, 
What does Gwe actually mean? Yeah, that's the question now. If anyone wants to Google that for a bonus point, I guess. <laughs> Not that there's any points. Um, um, East Timor is one of the, it's a Guarani word, interesting. East Timor is one of the newest countries in the world, also known as Timor-Leste. What does the word Timor translate to in English? Leste being the word for East. Yep. Callum got it. East Timor means East East. That was the question you got it before you even finished. You knew what I was going to ask. Timor means East. So the country is called East East in English and in, um, gosh, um, Malay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what language it is actually. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yes. What body of water borders Eritrea? If you don't know where Eritrea is, I'm not going to give you a hint. What famous body of water borders Eritrea? Paraguay means waterborne. Interesting. It's like Portugal. Yes. Hey, you guys got it. The Red Sea. Good job. Great job. It's the Red Sea. It borders the Red Sea. It's like Portugal, then which colonized East Timor. Oh, yes. Is that what it means? Is that what Timor comes from? Is it Portuguese? It's not like Chad. <laughs> it is the Red Sea. Eritrea and Ethiopia have resolved that conflict, thankfully, in 2019. So um, thankfully that, that conflict isn't going on anymore because it was really bad. Um, what is the largest desert in Jordan? What is the largest desert in the country of Jordan? What is it called? What is the largest, not the Negev. I mean, that might be like its Arabic name, but I only know its English name. <laughs> I do not know. Um, like, what is it typically referred to as? The largest desert. It, it makes up like 60% of Jordan. <laughs> Jordan's almost actually, oh, that sounds right. Yeah, Negev might be in Israel. Jordan is more than half desert. And it's like desert, desert. It's like barren sands, nothing. What is that desert called? I get so hot in this corner of my little apartment. I can't wait till it's cold. <laughs> mm. If y'all don't mind, the Ara oh, Ludmila, you're so close. Arabian desert's a great guess, um, but that's in Saudi Arabia. There goes the car. I'm going to eat a little ice cream and <laughs> cool off, if you guys don't mind. This is my secret hack to staying cool while I edit videos. <laughs> Wadi Room. Yeah, I think that is what it's called. Um, Portugal comes from Portuscale. It's like Harbor Harbor. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. Um, it's typically known as the Syrian Desert, but... Oh, I think I just spoiled it. The Wadi Room, I think, is its Arabic name. Eat a little ice cream. I'm sorry if you hate watching people eat, but it's hot and this is cold and really good. Um, what are the two autonomous regions in Georgia? What two regions in Georgia? have been pushing for independence. Abkhazia is one. We got Abkhazia. That's like the more famous one. And we really got South Ossetia and Abkhazia. Good job. South Ossetia and Abkhazia something. <laughs> Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Good job, you guys. Good, good job. Mm -hmm. mm, I feel better already. What two rivers meet in Khartoum, Sudan, the capital? Um, I'll, I'll leave it there because I don't want to spoil it. What two rivers in Africa meet in Khartoum to form one very big river? North Ossetia is an oblast. Um, oh, Christian got it right away. White and Blue Nile. Yes. The White Nile and the Blue Nile. North Ossetia is an oblast of Russia. South Ossetia, it wants to join that oblast. And Georgia says no. 
the one part of Russia or the one part of Europe that wants to join Russia and Russia's like, mm. <laughs> like they're right there, Russia. You can invade that. I mean they have like military there and stuff, but Privet. The one part of Europe that really wants to join Russia besides Transnistria. And Russia won't be <laughs> There's no reason for them to. Um, what's the name of the world's largest rock located in Australia? Belarus. Yeah, Belarus is pretty pro-Russian. But I think that um, Belarus kind of likes having independence in a way. Will got it right away. Uluru, yes. Mm. Mm. Uluru, good job. Or Ares Rock, the colonizer name. Mm -hmm. Donetsk and Lugansk in Ukraine. Hmm, debatable. Yeah, Russia invaded South Ossetia in 08. Invaded as in the people in South Ossetia welcomed them. Kind of, sort of like Crimea, but Crimea was a lot more intense. Hmm. The highest peak in Guyana is a Tapui, which is a flat-topped mountain. Oh, I ruined it. <laughs> What's the name of the mountain? The question was going to be, what kind of mountain is it? Which the answer was Tapui, but... What's the name of the mountain, then? <laughs> I've ruined that. Last bite. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Much better. I found with my migraines that eating something really cold really fast almost make it go away. I was kind of feeling it there. You don't know anything. Wasser Ubin Vergil Bungs virus. <laughs> Don't worry about it. This mountain is pretty infamous as it inspired um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to write The Lost World. And um, it inspired parts of the movie Up as well. It's the highest point in Guyana. Not Devil's Island. You have no ice cream and the shops close early on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad I don't live in a place like that. I know a lot of places in America have, um, like, they can't sell certain things on Sundays. Stuff like that. Um, but yeah, anyone want to take a stab at what the highest point in Guyana is? It's a very famous tepui, like the most famous tepui, I think, in the world. Um, also... If uh, speaking of Nat Geo on Disney Plus, there's a documentary called The Last Tepui, which they don't climb this mountain. It's not Angel Falls, that's in Venezuela, Waifu, but Creek yes. That also was part of Up, right? Um, it's Germany. Shots are closed on Sunday. I assume because your name, you were German, but there's a lot of places in the US like that too. I know there's like, um, when I was in Indiana, not that I drink alcohol, Caleb got it. Or Cal, I'm sorry, Roraima. It is Roraima. Um, when I was in Indiana, I learned that they can't sell alcohol on Sundays after 4 p.m. Okay. Isn't it neat, Callum? It's a crazy. Tapuis are the strangest formations, and we know so. It is partly in Brazil. It's, yeah, it's on the border of Guyana, Suriname, and Brazil. Um, but yeah, it's a, an interesting place. And we don't know a lot about Tepuis just because they're located in such an isolated part of the world that's very, very hard to get to. Again, if you, um, the supermarket is shut down at four in the UK, that's horrible. Where, where I am, there's so many 24 hour supermarkets. I take that for granted. But yeah, if you have Disney Plus, check out The Last Tepui on National Geographic. It is fascinating. It's about 
how they they climb this tapui that's never been climbed before to find um species of frogs and they identify like five something new species of frogs just on this mountain why um oh no your 24-hour supermarkets never came back after covid that's so sad in Connecticut, you can't sell alcohol past 10 p.m. and 6 p.m. on Sunday. Oh, you can't sell it past 10 p.m. And then on Sundays at 6 p.m. I get it. Yeah, shopping at 3 a.m. is, is an experience. Um, all the Walmarts here are 24 hours. And it's like entering a whole other planet when you're in a Walmart at 2 a.m. It's a different world. <laughs> you're like not on Earth. What was the colonial name for Sri Lanka? Waifu's in SoCal. I'm in NorCal. The, I'm in the better part of California. What's the colonial name for Sri Lanka? Or yeah, Ceylon. Yeah, that's kind of an easy one. I feel like more people know Ceylon than Sri, not Sri Lanka, but I feel like people can like name Sri Lanka. Mm, yeah, the better part. NorCal's the best. <laughs> I've been to SoCal so many times. NorCal's so much better. Anyway, we're not getting into NorCal, SoCal. Oh, Monterey. Nice. Monterey is wonderful. And it's right on that NorCal SoCal border. You guys are immune to all that. Monterey is great. Um, Armenians have a very sacred mountain to them that's no longer located in Armenia. It's in Turkey now. What is that mountain? LA. What is? Go Giants. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of the mountain that's sacred to Armenia? Hey, there's Doom Cheetah. Um, Mount Ararat. Mount Ar yeah, the Noah's Ark Mountain. Go Giants. Yes, um, Christian God, it's Mount Ararat. N no Dodgers here. We don't we don't have Dodger energy on this channel. Um, it is the mountain that Noah's Ark is believed to land on. Yerevan is the capital, and you can see Mount Ararat in Yerevan, but it is not located in Armenia. The the Turks took it from Armenia. Doomchita, I had a question about South Korea. You missed it while you were sleeping. Um, I had asked what the largest island in South Korea was. Armenia does look neat. Um, Armenians is one of those cultures where the diaspora... Mm, there you go. Sorry. Um, the diaspora has a larger population than Armenians in Armenia. There's more pe there's more Armenians outside of Armenia than in Armenia. So, yeah, it's kind of common in America to know Armenians or to have an Armenian neighborhood. Yeah, Armenian Turk relations are are a big yikes. That sounds right. LA might have the largest. Yeah, Jeju <laughs> Yeah, that's an easy one. Armenians have great food. Armenians have Armenians are lovely. Um Japan is made up of thousands of islands, but there are four main ones. What is the biggest of the main islands where you can find Tokyo? Oh, wife who got it right away, Honshu. <laughs> Easy peasy, Honshu, not Kyushu, it's Honshu. Honshu is the main island of Japan where you can find Tokyo, Mount Fuji, and most of their major cities. <laughs> Not Hokkaido, that's the like least populous of the main islands. Hokkaido is the, the northern snowy one. If you played The Sims, the um, Mount Kobarebi is based on Hokkaido. That's what Hokkaido is like. Oh, you're just naming them all now. <laughs> Sengoku, that's, that's, yeah, that's the Japanese name for Honshu, isn't it? Sengoku. <laughs> what are the four? Um, Shu, Kyushu, Hokkaido. Choshu doesn't sound right. But I can't remember. And some people count the Ryukyu Islands as like the fifth. Hokkaido, Honshu, I'm picturing them right now. I can't, I can't think right now, I'm sorry. Um, Choshu does not sound right. But definitely Kyushu, that's the... So Shikoku, that's the one. Shikoku, thank you, waifu. Shikoku is the other one. Shikoku is the smaller one. And Kyushu is the southern one. Anyway. Um, <laughs> nice. I'm a, I'm a former weeb. I'm a recovered weeb in a way. Um, 
Samoa, the area of Samoa is split in two. The left half is the independent nation of Samoa, who controls the right half of Samoa. What? America. Good job, you guys. <laughs> There's a place in Japan called Obama. <laughs> American Samoa. Yeah, that's one of the easy ones. Good job. It's the USA controls the other half of Samoa. Um, another one that's, I'm not going to say, what's the largest river in the Gambia? If you know, you know, what's the largest river? Oh, Alberto. Thank you. I live in SoCal and if I had my way, I'd move up North. Yeah. The Gambia river, <laughs> the Gambia river is the only river in Gambia. That's the largest river. The Gambia is mostly river. Alberto, thank you so much for um, that super chat. That's very, very kind. Yeah, I am in the better California. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, it was cannons, not guns. They would shoot a ball, and wherever it landed, that was the border. Um, I learned a lot. Like, when I do the history quiz, I'll talk about this, so I'll just give it to you now. I was scouring the internet when I was researching the Gambia, trying to figure out how the British acquired it because it's just this sliver of land in French territory. SoCal does have better Mexican food. I will say that far better Mexican food. And I've had some incredible Japanese food in SoCal, um, but definitely the, the North is the best seafood. I think we have the better seafood. Um, I used to live up north, yeah, Bay Area, best area for sure. Um, so I was looking up, trying to figure out how the, the British acquired the Gambia. Oh no, I think it was Portuguese at this point. It wasn't French yet. It was controlled by Portugal. Oh, Humboldt, that's way up north. <laughs> that's about as north as you can go. His old El Paso Turkey. <laughs> Why people taco night? <laughs> um, so... The story is, it was controlled by the Portuguese at this point, and there was a prince, there was a Portuguese prince, um, it's it's white people tacos, calm down. There was a Portuguese prince who was like a bum. <laughs> he was the, the black sheep of this, the royal family of Portugal. Um, and the, the family kicked him out because he was just spending money and he was very reckless and he was just like, a lazy millennial, I guess. I don't know. They kicked him out of the country and he literally went cow chopping to the royal families throughout Western Europe, crashing at different castles and staying with different families until they got tired of him and kicked him out. Until he met Queen Elizabeth I, he apparently <laughs> couch hopped over to, um, not Windsor Castle, but, um, Hampton Court probably. Um, and hung out with her, and she found him to be very funny. She had, like, a little collection of men that just amused her. And um, she found him very interesting and wanted him to stay, but she was like, I can't afford to keep you here. You can't just stay here forever. So he gave her the Gambia. <laughs> and that's how the Gambia came into British control, just that little bit. He said, well, I own this part of Africa. You can have that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the story that's how it was people are talking about tacos okay um it has to be corn some sort of meat with diced onions cilantro and salsa yeah there there is a right way to make tacos but if you have a way that you like tacos then like no one's gonna judge you <laughs> white people tacos are good they're just not real tacos Cilantro is coriander, is it? Cilantro is a um, really disgusting leafy green that <laughs> it tastes like soap. Yeah. Apparently there's a gene that people have that um, makes cilantro taste like soap. I just think it tastes horrible. <laughs> I don't taste the soap, but I don't like the taste of cilantro at all. It ruins dishes to me. The cilantro is not great. Um, cilantro goes in the trash. What large volcano in Tonga recently erupted this year? Yeah, my loss. You can have all the cilantro you want. I'm also kind of low-key allergic to it, so I get hives whenever I touch it with my hands. Um, 
coriander is a UK name. I never, I didn't know that. I guess I never really knew what coriander was. I figured it was a spice. What is the volcano in Tonga that recently erupted this year in 2022? It's a great name. Cilantro in the trash. <laughs> Interesting. Everything else added to the stash. Yeah. This is an anti-cilantro channel. <laughs> if you've never heard the song White People Talk O Night, that's worth looking up. It's very funny. <laughs> Cilantro's been canceled. I like tacos plain. See, that's the thing. Like, you'll eat a bu bush of cilantro. There is a right way to make tacos. But if you have a way that you like tacos, that's good. It's whatever. It's good food. Like, it's it's just not a, a taco. It's not authentic. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're weird about the weird herb in general. We don't say herb. We say herb. You don't eat tacos. Yeah, I just kind of like plain tacos, too. I am allergic to lettuce, so I can't have lettuce on it. And um, if I ever, like, add anything, it would be, like, salsa or um, extra cheese. I don't know. <laughs> you call arugula rocket? No one's answered. Oh, carbonzos. Yum, yum. Um, no one's answered my question. What's the name of the volcano in Tonga that recently erupted? in 2022 you all want to talk about tacos my live from this morning just turned into food talk too it was funny <laughs> what's the name of the volcano in tonga that recently erupted it's a great name My chat died. <laughs> it's not, it, I mean, Tonga is in the name, but it's not called Mount Tonga. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jimji doesn't eat anything that's in a taco. Johnny Boy got it. It's um, Tonga, it's Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai. Hunga Tonga Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai. It's in, like, I, I learned how to say it last year when I was researching Tonga, and then it erupted, and I was like, oh, hunga tonga hunga ha bye. <laughs> erupted. If you've never met a Tongan, those are also incredibly nice people. <laughs> hunga tonga hunga ha bye. yeah. Tongans are lovely. Two lives in one day, yeah, I was really, really lonely this morning, and I just needed someone to talk to, even if it was just, like, the chat, so I went live. I was kind of depressed, but um, it, it got better. There are some high points. I talked about King Richard the first at one point. It was interesting. Um, it was Tongan. Tongans are so kind. They are the nicest. Yeah, the Happy Island. That sounds about right. The kindest people. I'll tell you a story about Tongans. I'm not trying to be racist. Um, I used to work at a movie theater. And on quiet, like, Tuesday evenings, there was no one here. We just see these vans pull up just like four or five vans and we'd be like oh my god the tongans are here and like 30 tongans would walk in and they're all giant loud people and they're they're laughing having fun like the whole extended family would come go through the snack bar buy all the popcorn and then go to their movie and um it's it's funny tongans are large people they're just gigantic people and um at one point we had we got a new hire that was Tongan and I was like why do these Tongans show up in huge groups <laughs> like why do they do that and he's like that's literally just how we are like we do everything as a family everything did family and everything and I'm like that's so cool like it's just I remember like you would see like a van pull up and then a second van and they're like oh my god here come the Tongans <laughs> there's a Tongan family coming <laughs> the South Pacific Islanders in general are yeah, they are just lovely people. Um, what is the name of the two large mountains located outside the capital of St. Lucia of Castries? It's very beloved, famous mountains in St. Lucia. What are they referred to as? Besides, um, don't call them the lewd nickname. <laughs> Give me the actual name. The Piton. Yes, it is the Piton. Gros Piton and um, Petit Piton, right? Oh, that's right. You 
you were the one who went to St. Lucia. Who was I talking to before that? Um, I, it must have been you that recently went to St. Lucia. Petit Piton and Grand Piton. Yeah, Gros Piton it's called. Um, but I guess they're referred to as like the boobs because they do look like two boobs. <laughs> um, what? Um, okay, I'll, I'll phrase it the right way. Brunei is a very tiny, tiny country in Southeast Asia. What island is it located on? Um, wow, if you're just going to spam, you're going to get blocked. Let's um, put user on timeout. Hey, waifu got it. It's Borneo. Borneo, yes. Let me try to block this guy. No spamming allowed. There we go. Borneo is the answer. I know, annoying. I hate spammers. Um, what's the body of water between Sweden and Denmark? What's the name of the body of water between Sweden and Denmark? I don't know. Um, North Sea Julio is a good guess, but um, I, I, I think the North Sea, oh, Danzig is farther down. Danzig's over by Poland. Not the Bering Strait, that's on the other end of the world of Valio, but good guess. <laughs> um, the, the North Sea is kind of up near like the UK, like between UK and Norway, right? I'm talking about, um, it's it's near it's near Gothenburg, but there's a name for it. There's all those little watery areas around Sweden have names. What's the it's the largest one, I think, and it borders Denmark and Sweden. Uh not Bothnia, not the the Baltic Sea, I think, is where it's located, but I just want the name of the specific area. This might be more difficult than I thought. Bosnia, I think, is over by um, Finland, I want to say. Right? Like it's on the Sweden-Finland area. It has a Danish name, too. Oh, interesting. Oh, of course it does. It's Danish. Um, it starts with a K. I'll say that. It starts with a K. Skagerrak is the one next to it. <laughs> Skagerrak is the one near to it. I feel like I'm gonna break this fan and use it too much. Katagod. There we go. Why well, forgot it. it's the Katagod. Which um I only remember because I couldn't figure out how to pronounce it when I was doing my Sweden video. So that's it's not cheating, it's learning. I like just guessed in my video um how to say it, and I'm like, I think it's Katagod. And then I got comments from Swedes like, no, that's right. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Katagod, yeah. Great guess though. Skagarak is near to it. Um, what mythical creature can you find in Norway that cause trouble but are also good luck? What mythical creature lives in Norway that, um, you watched Vikings, yeah, the small one inside the got yeah. Trolls, Dumchita got it, they are trolls, yes, the trolls. I have a little Norwegian troll necklace that I got, gosh, like 25 years ago. Not dragons, not Loki. <laughs> He's just a troublemaker in and of itself. But, um, yeah, trolls is the answer. What's the largest island in the Philippines? Elsa. <laughs> Funny. What's the largest island in the Philippines? Luzon. Good job, Christian. It's on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, what city... Oh, wow. So there and welcome to That's awesome. What city in Croatia is attached to the rest of Croatia by a recently built bridge? What large city in Croatia is only attached to Croatia by a large recently built bridge? Um, wow, you're all putting a split, but that's not what I wrote down. <laughs> Was Am I wrong? Is it split? 
I think Split's more in the north. Dubrovnik is what I put, yeah. Isn't it Dubrovnik? Dubrovnik's the city in the south. Split's in the north of Croatia, I want to say. Oh, nice. Split's in LA Sister City. It's Dubrovnik, right? Yeah. It's in the south. They were both down south. Oh, I don't know. Dubrovnik is where they filmed King's Landing, yes. Anyway, scratch that question. <laughs> um, okay, kind of a tricky question, maybe. What is the most prominent industry in the northern part of Mozambique? What is the most prominent, dominant, wealthiest industry in northern Mozambique? An, econ an economy question. It is not diamonds. Good guess, though. Um, Why well, forgot it? Tourism. Yes. It is a beach paradise. It is tourism. They have gorgeous, like, five-star resorts and everything. Apparently, a lot of um, Afrikaners go there for summer vacation. It is tourism. Ophelia, oh, yeah. No, that's good. I want you to fall asleep during my videos. That's the goal. Learning is secondary. The relaxation and sleep is the primary goal. What is the highest peak in Slovenia that is also featured on its flag? It's um, a triple mountain peak, by the way. But um, what is this mountain called? The highest peak in Slovenia that is also featured on its flag. So hot. What is the highest peak in Slovenia? The triple peak that is also featured on its flag. Let me get a drink while I wait for the chat to catch up. Someone's going to get it. I feel like I have some Europeans here, right? Yep, Callum got it. Trey Mm-hmm. That was a bubble. Callum got it. Trey is the answer. Very important mountain in Slovenia. Um, what is the name of the place in Madagascar where you can find gigantic trees? What is the place in Madagascar where you can find gigantic trees. What's its name, like, most famously known as? It's like a stretch of land. It's the baobab tree, but what is the name of the um, section where the largest baobab trees all grow together? It's in southern Madagascar. Um, but they are baobab trees. That's part of that's part of the name is blank 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 baobabs. It's southwest, yeah. It's in that general area. It is a specific place. Um, lots of tourists go there to take pictures with the big old baobabs. Who knows what this area is called? These are pretty rare for American. The Calic Hill. <laughs> yeah, Calamism. I feel like I've known a couple of like little kids I've seen in preschools named Callum. So the name is slowly coming to America, but I really like the name Callum. So yeah, I think cause like Caleb is, um, yeah, it's usually with two L's. It's, I rarely see it with one, but, um, yeah, I think Caleb is more prominent in America. So I assume Americans see your name. I think Caleb see it with two L's. Anyone wants to guess this? Um, okay, Blank of the Baobabs, it's called. Blank of the Baobabs. It's a very common name, like the UK in general. Um, there's just not a lot of Callums in America, but um, I'll give that to you, Dr. Pickle. It's Avenue of the Baobabs. That is what it is called. So I'll give Dr. Pickle gets that one. The Avenue of the Baobabs. Which large geographic feature in Africa begins in Djibouti? This is one of those things that all the geography nerds know. It's like a joke. <laughs> what is the large African geographic feature that begins in Djibouti? Not Gulf of Aden, not Horn of Africa. It's on the mainland, not on the Gulf. It is a very large feature that spans a lot of Africa. It begins in Djibouti. 
actually it technically kind of begins in the Gulf of Aden in Yemen, but in Africa it begins in Djibouti. Not the Sahara, not the Sahara Desert. I don't think the, there we go, wife got it. It's the Rift Valley. The Great Rift Valley, which is where the uh, tectonic plates are splitting apart. So the geography joke there is that there is a crack in Djibouti. Ha 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 ha. There's a crack in Djibouti. A huge crack in Djibouti. Um, I didn't turn the page. Um, the world's largest seed is found in the Seychelles. What is it called? And for bonus points, what is it shaped like? I think that's more famous in its name. It is a type of coconut, by the way. What is the world's largest seed that only grows in the Seychelles? I need some Vaseline on it. Let's hold on. The world's largest seed only grows on the Seychelles. And um, not pearls. That's not a that's not a seed. Hmm. We're going to talk about pearls a lot on my channel this week. We're going to two countries that have very famous ancient pearling industries. The world's largest seed can only be found, I think, on like one island of the Seychelles. And has a very peculiar shape. <laughs> Who knows what it's called? Seychelles, not seashells. Yes, Seychelles, the, the island nation in the Indian Ocean. Seychelles. It's part of Africa, though. Please stop humming. Okay. I put my Vaseline up there and it started humming. Um, not durians. That's more Southeast Asia. That's like Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, right? Durians are down there. It is, cat. yes, it is a double coconut, technically, but it has an, a name. It's not called double coconut, at least from what I've, I've never heard it called that before. But it, it is like two little coconuts together, um, shaped very suggestively. <laughs> What's the name of the world's largest seed? It can be found only in the Seychelles, the butt cheek seed. Callum got the shape of it. It looks like a whole butt. <laughs> It looks like a big old round booty. What's it called though? Um, I'll tell in, in French it translates to coconut of the ocean. Ooh. I've always heard it called this. <laughs> sea coconut. Avilio. <laughs> it's coco de mer is called coco de mer and it looks exactly like a big old round booty like exactly um what national park there you go i forgot a coco de mer what national park in burundi is home to the endangered mountain gorilla yeah oh, by by Tarut is back welcome welcome what national park in Burundi and Rwanda too is home to the endangered mountain gorilla? I'm trying to fix my fan. My fan is very broken. It is very old. I feel like I'm giving you guys too hard questions. I'll give you an easy one next. I have a couple easy ones on this page that I wrote down. This might be too hard, I'm sorry. Virunga, there we go, Virunga, yeah. You don't know about gorillas. Um, Virunga, and there's also the Bwindi Impenetrable National Park, but I'll give you Virunga. There are mountain girls in Virunga, that's, that's correct. Burundi is done, that's Rwanda. Rwanda had the genocide, which I talk about in my live stream this morning. It came up in conversation. I explained the Rwanda genocide. Um, but Burundi is its neighbor. 
to the south, and um, they have the kind of same ethnic concept. Yeah, the scientific name of gorilla is Gorilla Gorilla. Yes. <laughs> um, what's the name of the autonomous region in Somalia that's been trying for independence? What's the name of the autonomous region in Somalia? There we go. Um, by Teruti got it first with Somaliland, but you all knew that. I'm going to throw some easy ones at you guys. <laughs> Somaliland, yes. Somaliland seems really cool. There is a forest in Belarus that is not safe for human habitation. Why is that? There is a large forest in Belarus that is unsafe for human habitation. Why is that? Um, radiation from, there we go, Callum got it, Chernobyl. It was, yeah, it got hit with the most fallout from Chernobyl, and it is not safe for human habitation. Chernobyl radiation, Soviet stuff. <laughs> One of those Soviet accidents. <laughs> it, it got the most fallout from Chernobyl, and people still cannot live there. Um, the United States founded the world's first national park. What was it? What is it? I should say it's still around. What's the world's first? I think I have enough to work here. <laughs> Stop. Uh, what's the world's first national park that was founded in the United States? That kind of kicked off. Not Yosemite. Good. I think Yosemite is number two. Yellowstone. There you go, waifu. Yellowstone is the first one. Yosemite, I think, was number two. Everglades is a good guess. I think that was... Um, actually, I think Everglades was added a lot later. But it was a protected area for a long time. Um, but yeah, Yellowstone is the world's first ever national park. I'm not saying it's better than anything. That is how Yosemite is said. Yes, it's not Yosemite. It's pronounced Yosemite. At least with the California accent, it's, it's Yosemite. Yosemite. But we say Yosemite. <laughs> Yosemite. It's Yosemite, yeah. I know not a lot of people outside of the U.S. don't know that. Like Yosemite Sam. There you go, yeah. Um, the Looney Tunes character. Um, yeah. I feel like a lot of Europeans I know didn't know it was pronounced Yosemite, but it's pronounced Yosemite. Um, dum, 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 dum. Um, when Comoros gained independence, all the islands took a vote in a referendum of whether or not they should be independent from France. One island voted to stay a part of France and not be independent. What island was that? Or is that? <laughs> They're still a part of France today. What island in Comoros is a part of France? But not Réunion, but that's a great guess. Réunion, I think, is just its own thing. It's very near Réunion in the little, like, Frenchy island area. There you go. Why forgot it with Mayotte? Mayotte is the island in the Comoros that... Um, voted to not be independent. They wanted to stay with France, and they still are today. Mm -hmm. What's the largest lake in Malawi? What's the largest lake in Malawi? New Caledonia? Did they? I know that, um, actually, that's coming up later in this trivia, so I'm not going to talk about it yet. <laughs> There's a question about that part of the world coming up soon. We'll talk about that then. Um, what's the largest lake in Malawi? It's another easy one, guys. Or I should say another obvious one. <laughs> what's the largest lake in Malawi? Why does France have an island called this? It, lake Malawi, yes. <laughs> it is called Lake Malawi. It's also Lake Nyasa. Some of the other, um areas around it. It's not Lake Victoria. It is Lake Malawi. It is the largest lake in Malawi. The country of Malawi is named after the lake, which is its traditional name. Nyasa is more of its colonizer name because apparently Dr. Livingston came there and said, wow, this is a beautiful lake. What do you call it? And they said Nyasa, which is their word for lake. Like they didn't know. It's just the lake. <laughs> so it became um, Lake Nyasa. The area became Nyasa land. Um, but its traditional name apparently is Lake Malawi. So depending where you are in Africa, it's either Lake Nyasa or Lake Malawi. But the largest lake in Malawi is Lake Malawi. 
So many African countries named after rivers and lakes like Chad and Niger. Yep, that's true. Um, because those areas before colonization didn't have names, you know, they were just areas where different tribes and cultures lived. So you gotta, oh, here's the question. Okay. The answer is not New Caledonia to this, by the way, but it's literally the next question. What island in the Solomon Islands voted to become independent and will become the world's newest country in 2026? What island in the Solomon Islands voted for independence very recently, like last month, and will become the world's newest country in 2026. Bougainville, yes, um, by Terut. Tell me how to pronounce that. Bougainville is its name. Bougainville is going to be the world's newest country. Can you imagine? It's kind of exciting. I wonder what's going to happen on this little island, Bougainville. Um, yeah, it was very recent in the news. Bougainville is going to be the world's newest country coming up. Very cool. It won't go to South Sudan or Kosovo, depending on how you agree with that. <laughs> um, what's the large body of water in Argentina? That's oh, bites or bits? You have to tell me. What's the name of the large body of water that borders Buenos Aires? And don't say the Atlantic, because that's not what I'm referring to. What large body of water borders um, Buenos Aires? Rio de la Plata. Good job, waifu. Bite. Okay, sing it goodbye. Okay, bite. Good job. Rio de la Plata is what borders Buenos Aires, but even though it's not a Rio at all, <laughs> it's not a river. It's a, technically a large bay, but when the Spanish landed there, they didn't know that. They thought it was a river, so they named it Silver River, Rio de la Plata, and it's the name stuck. <laughs> Rio de la Plata. Um, river of Silver, yeah, Silveria. True, true. There's a lot of silver there. <laughs> it's like the St. Lawrence River. Um, the Bahamas has many, many islands. The capital city of Nassau is not located on the largest, most prominent one. What island is that? What island in the Bahamas contains the capital city of Nassau? What city? I'm well, not city. <laughs> Sorry, I'm listening to my landlady's talking really loud next door. Um, what island in the Bahamas contains the capital city of New Providence. I just killed... I just ruined it. The capital city of Nassau is on New Providence. I ruined it. <laughs> I said it way wrong. Okay, scratch that. The island is New Providence. <laughs> I just ruined it. How about this? Um... The Kiribati, the Kiribati, Kiribati, the nation of Kiribati is split into two different island groups. In the Gilbert Islands, there is an island that is named after a holiday. What is it called? Um, what island in the Gilbert Islands in Kiribati is named after a holiday? Oh, it's so hot. I'm drinking water. Um, not Easter Island, it's Christmas Island. Yes, waifu. It's Christmas Island. A holiday like a vacation? No, <laughs> like an actual holiday. Um, no, Australia has its own Christmas island. It's not. Um, I think in Kiribati, it's called Kurisimas Island. Yeah, there's a Christmas. I think there's a couple Christmas islands in the world, but um, Kiribati is how you pronounce Gilbert. Yeah, isn't that neat? Um, their language is really interesting, but like, it's it's. Uh, let me see if I remember how it's spelled. It's like, oop, I have to actually be in the chat. It's spelled, I believe, like this, but it's pronounced Christmas in the language. It's something like that. It's pronounced Christmas. <laughs> yes. But yeah, there is a very tiny Christmas island to the west of Australia. Um, yeah, Hawaiian is Mele Kalikimaka. Um, Polynesian, yeah, Polynesian doesn't work well with English. <laughs> Too many vowels. Um, what invisible geographic feature goes through Sao Tome? What invisible geographic feature goes through the island of Sao Tome? 
The equator. Good job, Callum. It is the equator. Kind of an easy one. Um, Colombia has many, many, many high mountains. The two highest are named after what two famous figures? The highest and second highest mountains in Colombia are named after two historical figures. Who are they? Simon Bolivar is one. Pico Bolivar is the mountain, but it's named after Simon and Columbus. Pico Colombo is the highest peak in Columbus. You got it. It's Christopher Columbus and Simon Bolivar, named after the two highest mountains. What is the name of the two main regions of Belgium? Like the historic cultural names for the regions, the north and the south, not counting the weird German corner. What are the two main regions? Flanders is one, yes, and Wallonia. Good job, you guys. You guys are so smart. I love how smart my subscribers are. You guys are great. <laughs> Wallonia and Flanders, yes. We were talking about Sierra Leone before, which was founded by freed slaves, and so was Liberia, which people were like, I didn't know Sierra Leone was, I thought it was Liberia. Liberia was founded by freed slaves. The capital city is Monrovia, named after James Monroe. There's quite a few cities in Liberia named after famous Americans. Another one is Buchanan, that's a large city. But what city on the coast of Liberia is named after a famous American woman? What, what town, I guess, on the coast of Liberia is named after a famous American woman? And like, keep in mind, these are freed slaves, so keep that in mind. <laughs> what, what woman, I should say, is named after this town? What's the name of the, the historical figure? A town named after a famous American woman. Who was it? Historic American women. Oh no, this is someone that everyone knows, I promise you. And again, your hint is that this place was established by freed slaves. Rosa Parks, now she was in the 1960s. Harriet Tubman is the answer. Good job, Nathan. I think it's called Tubmanville, I want to say. But Harriet Tubman, not Eleanor. That's This was way before. This is like the 1870s, um, before before Eleanor was first lady. Old school song. <laughs> yeah, it's named after Harriet Tubman, who, if, if you don't know, was um, a huge abolitionist, former slave who worked to free thousands of people from slavery. Hence why they named a town in Liberia after her. What is the dominant religion of the Maldives? What is the dominant religion of the Maldives? Throw in a... a um, Socialism question for you guys. Islam. Good job, Calum. It is Islam. It is Islam. Yes, good job, Julio. And waifu. And Sunni Islam. Waifu was very specific. There is a star and crescent on the flag. Yes, that's a, that's a good indication that it's a, a Muslim country or Muslim dominated at least. Um, which city contains the International Criminal Court? Which city contains the International Criminal Court? Yep, Nathan got it. It's The Hague. I feel like I have a lot of Europeans here, which is crazy because it is... Good job, you guys. You guys all knew it was The Hague. Um, it's like late at night over there in Europe right now. I feel like I have a lot of Europeans and waifu who's over here with me and Cal. But um, yeah, anyway, The Hague. Good job, you guys. Another easy one. What's the name of the large Inca city in Peru that remained hidden for hundreds of years? Which large Incan city in Peru was hidden for hundreds of years till it was rediscovered? Here we go. Julio got it first with Machu Picchu. Yes. Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. I had to have Machu Picchu in here. I love it so much. But Julio got it first. Good job. Um, Vanuatu is located in which region of Oceania? Not Cusco. Cusco is still populated. It's quite small. Yeah, it's on a mountaintop, so it's not huge, you know. I'm watching Ancient Aliens. Ho, ho. But yeah. Um, which region of Oceania can you find Vanuatu? There's three main regions-ish of Oceania. It is not Micronesia. 
That's, that's one of the regions, but that is not where you'd find Vanuatu. Micronesia is the one to the north. Um, Macronesia is, um, there we go, Will got it, it's Melanesia. Melanesia is the one, it's Micronesia, Melanesia, Polynesia. Are the, the main like island groups. It is part of Melanesia. Good job, Will. Um, what was the former colonial name of Benin? The uh, Black Islands. Listen, those people have dark skin. I mean, think like um like Torres Strait Islanders are Melanesian. They have dark, 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 dark skin. <laughs> so, yeah. So do Vanuatuans. German West Africa was the region. Was it in German West Africa? I'm pretty sure it was owned by the British. Um, it's named after a, a, a famous like tribe, like kingdom that used to exist there. What is the former colonial name of Benin? Benin was French. Oh, you're right. Uh, hello. Ghana and Nigeria were British. Anybody know? It was known as this until independence, and then they renamed it to Benin. Togo was German. I have to go through watch all my West Africa <laughs> videos. There you go. Callum got it. It's Dahomey. Dahomey was its name until it gained independence and they renamed it to Benin. I think after like a year of independence, they like passed a resolution to rename it from Dahomey. So it's kind of a colonizer name. What's the largest desert in Niger? This is another easy one. It's the largest desert you can find in Niger. It's an obvious one. Yep, why forgot it's the Sahara. <laughs> Just threw out an easy one. It's very dominated by the Sahara Desert. It is the Sahara. Um, speaking of colonizer names, Burkina Faso name came from, I'll answer that later. Um, Burkina Faso's colonial name came from a river. Um, what river system is it? Because it, it's, a, there we go, Volta, yeah. The Volta was its color, or Alto Volta, you know was its name upper volta yep but it's named after the volta rivers because there's two large ones kind of like how the nile is split into they meet in lake volta and ghana but yep it's named after the volta rivers <laughs> you remembered um what's the largest lake that's on the border of bolivia and peru what's the largest lake in bolivia and peru that sits on their border i should say the large lake on the border of bolivia and peru Titicaca, good job, Will. It's Lake Titicaca. Titicaca, good job. I know, it's a great name. <laughs> Titicaca is wonderful. Um, what is the name of the city in the north of Jamaica famous for its resorts? What city in northern Jamaica is famous for its resorts? On the north coast of Jamaica. Okay. The large city on the north coast of Jamaica, very famous for its resorts. It's not, it's not Kingston. That's why I'm emphasizing the north, because Kingston's in the south, and that's more of like a cruise ship stop, not really a resort place. Um, yeah, large city in the north of Jamaica, famous for its resorts. You can find sandals there. It's another name that everyone knows, but you don't really think about. Like when you hear it, you'd be like, oh yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, it's another one of those facts that everyone knows, but you don't know that you know it. The name of the large city in the north of Jamaica. It's famous for its resort. Who's going to be able to Google it the fastest? Um, not Spanish town. Mm, yeah, I wouldn't really say that. That's more of like a... a tourism like historical town i'm talking like beach resorts that americans go to <laughs> oh yeah that's near kingston that's true spanish town is more historical that's where you can find all the old stuff there we go wife who got it. it's montego bay you got it it's montego bay 
Yes, yes, yes. Montego Bay is the city. Um, Cote d'Ivoire's capital is home to the world's largest what? Which I talked about in length in my Ivory Coast video. Because um, I, I doubted it. It's um, the largest in area. But Cote d'Ivoire's capital is home to the world's largest what? Yamoussoukro is the capital, by the way. It's home to the world's largest what? Um, let's do Montego after that. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Not elephants. That would be cool, though. <laughs> um, Yamoussoukro, Cote d'Ivoire is home to the world's largest blank. It's a kind of building, I should say. The world's largest blank. Who knows? Who knows? If you saw my Ivory Coast video, you know I, I talked about this for like a minute because I didn't believe it. And it, it kind of is, it kind of isn't, but it claims to be the world's largest of these. Not a mosque. Church. There you go. It is the world's largest church. So I spent, yeah, it's a church. I spent my video going, um, the Vatican is the world's largest church. So technically the Vatican is the world's largest church building, but the area around this, it's the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace in Yamasukro is by area because it has lots of like grass and park and buildings. It, um, it's a huge property. The church itself is not nearly as big as the Vatican, but the property around it makes it the world's largest church. Yeah, the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace. It was literally built as a flex. Like they built it so it would be the world's largest church. Um, what is the name of the beautiful man-made nature park in Singapore? St. Peter's, yeah, St. Peter's is the biggest church building, but Nyamasukro has the biggest church property. It's bigger than the Vatican, <laughs> like the, the whole Vatican City. Um, what's the name of the man-made nature park in Singapore, which is absolutely stunning? It looks like you're in the Avatar movie. <laughs> it's beautiful. Who knows what it's called? Very famous tourist spot in Singapore very recent i think it was built in like within the last 10 years too it's gorgeous who knows what it's called man-made nature park in singapore who knows who knows who knows Oh, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to put on my nails so I could film tonight. Let me do that while you guys Google. Because <clears throat> I'm barren right now. Because <laughs> so I have to film tonight. I have to film Kazakhstan tonight. And if I'm up for it, I'll film Qatar tonight too. Let's get that out of the way. Um, wow, to Vozim we Linda. Gracias, Namu. Gracias. Muchos gracias. Um, I need this one. No. Anyone, does anyone know? In Singapore, the, the large man-made nature park in Singapore, it's kind of like a very famous tourist spot. Singapore is like a dictatorship. I wouldn't say that. I mean... It's not a dictatorship, but their government is very, very strict on lots of different aspects of life. It is a weird system, but yeah, it does work for them. I know some people in Singapore aren't happy, but they have a very high quality of living. So yeah, um, yeah, very authoritarian, but it's not a dictatorship. They, I mean... There are, there are countries out there that are still in dictatorships, so you wouldn't call it that. True. They supported South Vietnam. That's true. And so does Switzerland. And they're not so strange. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's called the Gardens by the Bay. 
And if you haven't seen what they look like, you should definitely look them up because it's absolutely stunning. It's on my little bucket list. Let me see the next question. Um, what Pacific Island chain belongs to Ecuador? Yeah, Gardens by the Bay. That's the one, Callum. What Pacific Island chain belongs to Ecuador? Galapagos. Good job, Will. It's the Galapagos. Galapagos Islands. Let me move these nails off here. These are my pinkies. And we're going to go this one, this one, and this one. One, two, three. Okay. There we go. Um... What large body of water in Chad is drying up? What large body of water in Chad is slowly drying up? Well, not really slowly, but is very visibly drying up. Maybe gone in the next decade or so. What's the name? Yep, it's Lake Chad. Yes, Chad meaning lake in that dialect. And um, it's it's going away. It's disappearing, so... Um, yeah, like Chad is slowly drying up. Um, which area within the border of India and Pakistan is highly disputed to this day? What is the territory located within Pakistan slash India that both countries claim and is highly, highly disputed? Yeah, Kashmir. Yes, Jammu and Kashmir is the full name. All of it. <laughs> Stop. Jammu and Kashmir is the area. Good job. The world's highest war. I mean, not war. The world's highest conflict right now. The highest elevated conflict. Oh, of course, China does. <laughs> China. China's job is to like dispute territories. <laughs> Jammu and Kashmir is named the Indian state. I think. Like, internationally, Indians claim it, but Pakistan also claims it. <laughs> so, um, I think in the West, we give it to India because it's more of a Western-leaning country than Pakistan is. But Pakistan also claims it, so it's highly disputed. What's the name of the largest desert in India? Oh, Pakistan might call it something else. Oh, I didn't know that. I, th I think that, I thought they just called it Kashmir. What's the largest desert in India? The largest desert in India. Who knows? Who knows? They have all kinds of different climates on that subcontinent. It's beautiful. But what's the name of the largest desert? Um, region Kashmir is part of the Chinese Empire. Oh my gosh. Callum got it with the Tar Desert. Yes, it's the Tar Desert. The, the Kashmir region is so convoluted <laughs> anyway i wasn't trying to talk politics i'm just stating the fact that it is highly disputed the tar desert yes Kel, the largest desert in india what is the name of the border between north and south korea what is the name of the border between north and south korea the dmz wife who got it first the demilitarized zone the dmz Yep. I, I throw in some easy ones there. The DMZ, which apparently was like a huge, like they, they advertise that as a big place for like Western people. At my last job, which um was at like a kid's um place where I did birthday parties, I saw a kid with like a little DMZ shirt on and it was all cartoony and it, you know, the DMZ on it, and I was just staring at it like, what the, <laughs> like, the heck, okay, sure, um, the capital of the Republic of Congo is Brazzaville, it is the closest capital city to what, t-shirt of Berlin Wall, no man's land, I know, start like a kid's t-shirt collection of, like, <laughs> dangerous territories, <laughs> um, 
Brazzaville in Congo is the, well, it's closest to Kinshasa, but um, it's the, I, I guess I phrased this wrong. It is the closest capital city to another capital city was the answer. <laughs> I didn't phrase that right. Yeah, there we go. Well, got it. As in another capital city. Yeah. It is well, also Kinshasa, but Brazzaville is the capital city that is the closest to another capital city. Just across the Congo River. Speaking of Brazzaville, in the Gabon video, I learned about Pierre de Braza, who was apparently just a super nice guy, was a bit of a colonizer, but everyone loved him. He founded um, Wet City in the south of Gabon that has a very weird name today. <laughs> Not weird, but very boring name today, based on the name that Pierre de Braza gave it. They named Brazzaville after him. They, Pierre, they loved Pierre de Braza. He was apparently just a chill, cool guy. <laughs> what city did he found in the south of Gabon? With like a very kind of boring name now. I threw in kind of a hard one. <laughs> um, you have to look at a map of Gabon and find the most boring looking name you can. Uh, not Freetown. That was established by slaves. <laughs> Brazzaville's named after a really nice guy, and Leopold's named after one of the worst people. <laughs> exactly. Just next door. Well, it's not Leopoldville anymore, because Leopold and his family doesn't control it. It's Kinshasa now, but yeah, everyone loved Pierre de Braza. He was just apparently a cool guy. Like, um, tribes welcomed him, and um, yeah, everyone loved Pierre de Braza. He was just chill. <laughs> learn the languages and everything. Um, not Libreville. I think he might have founded Libreville or Freetown. Um, but I'm, I'm talking about a city in the south of Gabon. There we go. Franceville. Yeah. Franceville is a town that he founded in, in the name of France. Um, that, yeah, that he founded as like his base of operations in the country. He wasn't called that. But over the years, it became known as Franceville. <laughs> um, on what island can you find Indonesia's capital city of Jakarta? On what island can you find Indonesia's capital city of Jakarta? Java. Good job, wife, who got it first. It is Java. Java is the island. Good job, good job, good job. I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> so it is Java. Good job, Alberto. Um, Afghanistan has like a round shape with a little tail sticking out this way. What is the name of that narrow area of Afghanistan? What is that little strip of Afghanistan called? What is its geographic name? Who knows, who knows, who knows? The Russian part. Not anymore. Khorasan, not quite. I think that's like just Eastern Afghanistan in general. I'm talking specifically this part of Afghanistan's geography. Starts with a W. It's not Russian anymore. The Russians backed out after they invaded. Who knows? Who's going to Google it fastest? Uh, I covered it in history. It's the something corridor. Correct. It is the blank corridor. The blank corridor. The Wakan Corridor. There you go. Callum got it. It's the Wakan Corridor. It's the name of that weird narrow strip in northeastern Afghanistan. What's the largest island in Estonia? What's the largest island in Estonia? Very famous for um, 
in the winter, the the um, ocean freezes. Estonia has a lot of islands. Yes, they're on the the Balkan Sea. In winter, it, it the water freezes, and you can drive to this island over the ice. <laughs> Apparently, it happens every winter. And this island is um the Baltic Sea. Ha ha. Whatever. Don't joke about the Balts. <laughs> Um, this island's like the big vacation spot in Estonia. Estonia has like 40-something islands, I want to say. Snail is not on. Who knows what it is called? I also saw quite a few um, like Teutonic night battles there. And there's a famous um, meteorite crater on this island also if anybody knows or can Google enough. Here we go, honk honk. Anybody, anybody, loud car knows out there. Get off me there. Anyone, anyone, hi Alex. My trivia question right now is what is the largest island in Estonia? Sarima. Oh, I forgot it. It is Sarima. It's the name of the island. Really pretty island, too. Um, 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 um. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Easy. It's Sarima. Yeah. Do they take their Finnish neighbors? It's the islands. Not near. Finland has way more islands than Estonia. <laughs> um, what part of the Ukraine was annexed by Russia in 2014? Oh, Corland is where that island is located. Yeah, historically, it's in Corland. Um, acid nutria got it first with Crimea. Yes. Crimea. Crimea. Threw in some easy ones there. Um, what is the name of the autonomous area of Moldova that is still committed to communism, like Soviet communism? Yeah, Corland was its own thing for a minute. It was a duchy. Um, Acid Nutria got it with Transnistria. Yes, Transnistria is the answer. Julio got it too. Waifu got it. Transnistria, very interesting place. They still practice Soviet communism as if it's 1990 still. Party like it's 1990 <laughs> back in the USSR. Um. What's the largest mountain range in Kyrgyzstan? They don't allow foreigners. Well, they do like on vacation, but I don't think you can live there and be a foreigner. Just They do not follow communism. Yeah, they just love communism. <laughs> they, they can't really practice it because it's still, um, still technically part of Moldova, but they, they claim autonomy. I need a sticky. What is the name of the largest mountain range in Kyrgyzstan? No idea. It's a Chinese name, I'll say, because it's also in China. But um, the, the highest peaks of it, I believe, are in Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, it was Soviet communism. I mean, no country has followed what actual communism was meant to be, like what Karl Marx set out communism to be. Because on paper, the, the Marxist communism sounds great, but no country has been able to fully implement it because it requires your leaders being not corrupt in any way. And uh, that's kind of impossible in this era. So, um, yeah, true communism has never really been implemented anywhere in the world. It's their own form of communism. Um, yeah, it is, it's a Chinese named mountain range, really pretty place, really famous for the Silk Road. And it's where the highest mountains are located. I think like north of the Himalayas, that whole area. Oh, I'm filming Kazakhstan tonight. So I'm talking about this mountain range also because it's also in Kazakhstan, but it has very, very, very high mountains in Kyrgyzstan. Anyone will take a stab at it. Anyone Googling fast enough? The largest mountain range, it's not the Ural, that's in Russia. 
the largest mountain range in Kyrgyzstan. And it's a Chinese name. The Chinese named it. And I think it means holy mountain, if I'm not mistaken. Or like sacred mountains or something like that. In whatever Chinese dialect it's named after. Um, not Yazgulen. Um, not Kartau. I've never heard of these. <laughs> um, I mean, you can also, there we go, I forgot it was Tian Shan. Yeah, it's the Tian Shan mountain range, which you can find in various other countries throughout Central Asia, but the highest peaks are in Kyrgyzstan. We say communism, yeah, speaking of socialism. No, full communism would imply no states, yeah. No leaders, no states, just pure equality. True, com true Marxist communism has never been implemented anywhere in any communist country. That's just the name that's been adopted. Because communism implies you live in a commune. And um, it's very hard to make a political commune. Capitalism, blah, blah, blah. Um, what's the name of the large twin towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia? I've got my fingers on now. The Petronas Towers. I'll give that to Acid Nutria. It's the Petronas Towers. Yes, yes, yes. Um, for Trinidad and Tobago, the island of Tobago got its name because it's shaped like a what? And think Spanish too. Tobago because it's shaped like this thing. The Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur. Um, tobacco is close. It's a tobacco product yeah the, the fans out it's hot a cigar why oh, forgot it it's shaped like a cigar hence tobago tobacco cigar <laughs> that's how it got its name it looks like a big old round cigar um what body of water found for the most part in uzbekistan is slowly disappearing Also, not really that slowly either, but um, not not slower than Lake Chad. Yeah, Asanuchi is on it. Errol C, good job. You're ready. For, you came for the geography trivia. <laughs> good job. Um, what's the name of the major river delta in Vietnam? Oh, it's not the Caspian Sea. That's not going nowhere. <laughs> Caspian Sea is here to stay at least until in a couple million years, and the tectonic plates move close together. Mekong, good job. Acid Nutri is going to be our new geography champ. You are on it. It is the Mekong River Delta. Um, Red River, kind of. No, I think Red River flows into the Mekong, right? No, the grenadines are named after pomegranates. Yeah, or Grenada, yep. Oh, Grenada is named after Granada in Spain. But, yeah. Um, the country of Eswatini became its official name in 2019. What was its former name, its, its colonizer name? Yep, jeez, Swaziland. You were on it, Acid Nutrient. It is Swaziland. Who knows why they changed it other than it's the colonial name. They had a... They had a reason why they changed it from Swaziland, according to the king. Because of Switzerland, because they said it sounded too much like Switzerland. So they named it Eswatini. <laughs> um, what's the largest city in Brazil, at least by population? What's the largest city in Brazil? It is not Rio. It is Sao Paulo. Good job, you guys. Sao Paulo. That's a trick because people automatically think Rio, but it is actually Sao Paulo. Speaking of countries' name changings, North Macedonia had to change its name because of a territorial dispute with what country? North Macedonia officially became, yep, Greece. Acid Nutria is on it because of Greece, because there's a part of Greece called Macedonia that borders the country of Macedonia. So they finally agreed to change the name, not Yugoslavia, 
Greece. They agreed to change the name to North Macedonia, which a lot of Macedonians don't agree with, but that's, that's the solution that pleases everyone. All right. They were terrified Macedonia was going to try and take it back. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that is the, the era where Alexander the Great <laughs> came from. And he was very famous for taking what he wanted. Um, the capital of Tajikistan is home to the world's second largest what? The capital of Tajikistan is home to the world's second largest what? There's no south. There is a south. It's in Greece and it's just called Macedonia. Waifu got it with flagpole. Statue of a horse close. <laughs> it's flagpole. They have the world's second largest flagpole. Yeah, Turkmenistan. Because that guy loves his horses. <laughs> Talking about in the Turkmenistan video. The world's second largest flagpole. Because they're very proud of that fact. Um. Okay, I threw in an easy one here. What ocean does El Salvador border? Pyongyang is first? No, America is the first. You'll, you'll never guess who owns the world's largest flagpole. It's not the, it's the Pacific, I said, Nutria, it's the Pacific. Who owns the world's largest flagpole, guys? It's, it's an American. It's an American, it's in America. What, what person in America owns the world's largest flagpole? It's a person, yeah. It's on his property. It's not in Texas. It is Donald Trump. <laughs> it's on one of his golf courses, the world's largest flagpole with the um, world's largest American flag. <laughs> Whatever. You, you have to have the best of everything, apparently. Um, what area of Guadalajara? I don't think it's in Mar-a-Lago. I think it's on one of his other golf courses. Anyway, what area of Guatemala is home to the most Mayan cities? What area of Guatemala is home to the most Mayan cities? <laughs> it's like the, you know how Guatemala has like a chunk and then like a big square shape. <laughs> it's that square shape up there. It's, um, yeah, it's near the Yucatan, which is in Mexico. Did I stump acid nutria with a geography question? Um, the Yucatan is where you can find the most cities in um, Mexico. Not Valley of Something. It's the official name of the region now. Um, which the territory has been disputed with Mexico because it's literally just like thick jungle. There's no way to delineate a border. Why do you call people from Guatemala watermelons? Oh, I guess Guatemala watermelon. Okay. I, now that I said it out loud, I kind of feel it. The area, not the Darien Gap, that's Panama and part of Colombia, which I think that question's coming up. So hold on to that because um, it's funny. <laughs> funny. You're funny. Hey, um, Sante Johnny, Chiapas. It's not Chiapas. I think Chiapas is in Mexico too. It starts with a P. Yeah, Chiapas is in Mexico. It starts with a P. Um, I did a video on Tikal and I talk about this place a lot. Nope. Paul Thomas, I don't even, I've never even heard of that. It starts with a P. Again, like I said at the beginning, um, not the Pompous, that's in South America. Um, feel free to Google if you don't know, because I'd rather you learn the answer than sit around saying, I don't know. Like, look up the answer and see who's the fastest Googler who can find it. It does start with a P. It's a large area of Guatemala that's pretty much all just jungle. <laughs> and um, there's tons of Mayan cities. There's still a lot of um, strawberry elephants. I don't know what that is, Avram. The Paten. There you go. I said Nutria got it. It's the Paten. There, Callum got it too. Paten. You guys are the fastest Googlers. The Paten area. They use um, drone technology to like try to find other Mayan cities. And they have... Oh, really? Interesting. It's the Paten. Um, they, they find new Mayan... I think the last city they found was like 2020, I want to say. They're finding them all the time. It's just they're all overgrown in the jungle up there. 
Speaking of the Mayans, what is the name of the famous Mayan ruins you can find in Honduras? It's their biggest tourist attraction in Honduras. What's the name of the very mysteriously weird Mayan city you can find in Honduras? Chichen Itza is in Mexico, which Chichen Itza is my favorite Mayan city. Let's be real. It's the coolest. <laughs> um, yeah, Chichen Itza is in Mexico. Um, Tikal is in Guatemala. It's in that Paten region. In Honduras. It's not called Honduras. Christopher Columbus named Honduras. Central American geography. Well, there's always there's always places in the world that people can brush up on. There's always a corner of the world. That's why I started this channel, is because I realized how many corners of the world I knew absolutely nothing about. So I wanted to know. And then when I knew, I wanted to share it with people. And I'd always wanted to do an ASMR channel. So boom. Um, but yeah. The famous Mayan ruins you can find in Honduras. It has a lot of very weird buildings in terms of like really precise mathematics and the, the Mayan calendar stuff. Tazulum, I haven't heard of that. It is not that. It starts with a C. It's a really interesting place and it's um, Honduras' biggest tourist draw because it's a very easy, like you don't have to go through a forest to get to there. Why does Chichen Itza sound like an Abba song? You're thinking of um, Chiquitita. Cus Catalan? No. Um, Chichutan? No. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Chichen Itza. I guess Chichen Itza is also like the American English pronunciation. I guess it's it's like Chichen Itza or something in like Spanish. I'm not sure, but here in America we say Chichen Itza. But no, it is a really interesting, really weird ruins in that there's a lot of um, math and symbolism on these ruins. Casablanca? No. <laughs> it is not it at all. According to Google, in Honduras, Mayan ruins starts with a C. The biggest tourist attraction in Honduras. Gets the most visitors. And there's, um, you know, now they have a whole town, which um, I have a question about the Cambodian. Oh, there you go. I said neutral. I'll give that to you. It's Copan. Yes, Copan is the answer. Um, they have a whole city, like a, a current modern city that pretty much serves as like the tourist. Yeah, Copan. The, the tourist jumping off point to go explore Copan in the jungle and it's very easy to access it's like a good beginner's mine ruin adventure in copan what's the largest lake in nicaragua what's the largest lake of nicaragua lake nicaragua <laughs> Got it. it is um lake lago de nicaragua Lake Nicaragua is the largest lake in Nicaragua. Um, last Central American question. What was the Aztec capital city called? What was the name of the Aztec capital city? Oh, good job. Tenochtitlan. That's a new tree is on it. Tenochtitlan. Good job, you guys, to Noctitlan. I know Nahuatl is very complicated, but man, they would have been ASMR champs back in the day. I know some people still speak Nahuatl. Someone who speaks Nahuatl really needs to make Nahuatl ASMR because it's a lot of like Tenochtitlan. <laughs> lots of lots of tingly words there. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, um, the driest area in the world can be found in Chile. What is called the driest area in the world that really hasn't had any precipitation for over 20 years at this point. There we go. Atacama Desert. Acid Nutri is on it. And Mexico is North America. Yeah, technically, um, um, Mexico is North America. All of Central America is North America. Um, we're just taught that, like, like you're going to see in a book on Tuesday where I do um, 
famous buildings of North America and that this book just considers North America to be Canada and the U.S. Mexico is not in Asia, Ludmila. Hello. Unless there's like a town somewhere in Asia called Mexico. Um, hello. Oh, your name's in Cyrillic and I can't read it. Please tell me how to pronounce it. I've gotten really bad. I've gotten really rusty at Cyrillic. I used to be pretty good at at least pronouncing things, but I need to brush up on Cyrillic like crazy. Um, okay. This one's kind of hard. Um, maybe I'm just going to skip this one. Maybe I'll just tell it to you. Um, when I was researching St. Kitts and I read the name of the first town that the British established, I had to do a double take. Does anyone want to take a stab at what it was named? This is a tricky one. The first town that was established by the British on St. Kitts. And it's it's funny, New New London. <laughs> No, it's, um, you know, I'm just going to tell you guys, I'm going to write it here. Mexicans don't like being called Central American. Yeah, it's, it's complicated. It's North America. It's called, not Jamestown, that's America. This, which when I read that, I went, are you serious? And then I blinked and read it correctly. <laughs> And it's funny because I show people a map of St. Kitts and they're like, Old Town Road? I'm like, no, read it. It's Old Road Town. <laughs> Our brains are just um, like configured to see Old Town Road at this point. It's called Old Road Town. I literally I looked at the map and I went, what? Old Road Town is its name. Isn't that funny? That's too hard of a trivia question for you guys. What is the name of the... Maybe they had roads... <laughs> before towns maybe you hate that song oh well it's it's yeah it's a little cringe now what's the name of the large anomaly in the coral reef off of belize british colonist name maker <laughs> the, the british were the worst at naming their colonies and then the dutch like picked up their habits and the french yeah the great blue hole i said nature got it big blue <laughs> The big hole. Yeah, it's the Great Blue Hole. That's the name. You got it. Exactly. The Great Blue Hole. I think it's the world's largest coral sinkhole, right? Other than um, the the um, the one off of the Yucatan. Turkey is Europe. Um, I, I think that the western part of Istanbul is located in Europe and Anatolia is in Asia. I think that's technically it. Yeah, the blue hole looks really awesome. Oh, why is it? I, I can't remember the name of the, the meteor that killed the dinosaurs. It's the area off of the Yucatan Peninsula where you can find the, the crater hole. Which, But I think the, the great blue hole is um, the, the biggest coral sinkhole. Anyway. Um, in what body of water can you find Malta? There's a lot of weird places. <laughs> In what body, sneezy one, what body of water can you find Malta? Mediterranean, yeah. Acid nutria, of course, got that. 30 degrees Celsius, no, it's hot. That's pretty much what it is here, but thankfully it, it, was, it didn't get that hot. The Mediterranean is the answer. The Mediterranean. The Central Valley of Bulgaria has a lot of ancient tombs in it and therefore has this nickname. What's the nickname of the Central Valley of Bulgaria named after its many, many ancient tombs? Yeah, Adriatic's between Italy and Croatia. Not Valley of Death, but it is um, Valley of blank. You don't know. That's a nutrient. you're the G Valley of Yogurt. <laughs> Tomb Valley. No, it's the Valley of the Valley of the Fallen Part Two. No. Think of what ancient peoples lived. Wyatt, no. <laughs> Valley of Eminem. What ancient peoples lived in that area? And what status of people would have had elaborate fancy tombs? Valley of the Greeks. Well, it was a very specific kind of Greek people. No, not that. Not Mongols. 
Constantinople. This is Greece. So in Constantinople is, is founded by the Greeks. Um, Valley of Kings is very close. The Thracians were there. So I'm going to give that to um, Callum and Ludmila combination. It is the Valley of the Thracian Kings is what it's called. Lots of really cool tombs there. They they did tombs in a, in a cool way. They didn't like... Um, yeah, they, they made it like come to our tomb. Like they made it very accessible. So it wasn't hard to like really find. There's only been a couple of new finds, but they've they've maintained the, the Thracian tombs very well throughout history. What was the former capital of the Mali Empire? Asinutri is gonna get this real fast. The former capital of the Mali Empire in Western Africa. Yep, I knew it. Timbuktu was the answer. I said, Nutria got it, as I expected. Timbuktu is the answer, not Dakar. That's in Senegal. I don't think Senegal was even in the Mali Empire. It was definitely in the Songhai. Ouagadougou, no. It's just fun to say. Uh, not Bamako. You guys are naming, like, you guys have a lot of knowledge of West African cities. It is Timbuktu. It is not in Texas. <laughs> it is in Africa. Um um, what Soviet accident in the desert of Turkmenistan is now a tourist attraction? Timbuktu. <laughs> what Soviet accident in the desert of Turkmenistan is now a tourist attraction? Karakum. Well, that's the desert that it's in. Um, it is a giant hole. <laughs> you can say it's a nickname. It's more known by the nickname than its actual name. The, the big hellhole thing. I'll give that to Callum. It's the gate of hell. Yeah. It, was the gate. it is a giant crater in the ground that is filled with an eternal flame fire that will burn for probably the rest of humanity. That's called the gate of hell. What's the name of the large inland delta in Botswana? When they set on fire. Yeah. They were like, what should we do? Let's just put it on fire. It'll burn out in a bit. And it never has. <laughs> The large in <laughs> why you're funny. Uh oh, it's a fire truck. Hold on, let me mute this while it goes by. Okay. Oh, and we've got our bot. Hold on, let me report it. It'll take a second. Um, there we go. Report. Get that ball out of here. Um, the large inland delta you can find in Botswana. <laughs> I know. You know, I didn't want to say anything. I did a live stream this morning. I didn't have one bot that appeared. Um, so I was like, oh, maybe they've, they've gotten better about it. But, you know, I've gone almost three hours, and that's the first bot, so that's pretty good. That link seems legit, says Wyatt. That's funny. Large inland delta in Botswana. There's not a lot of inland deltas in the world. It's really weird. It's in Botswana. You jinxed it. No. Oh, bots. <laughs> the, the, the bots heard Botswana. There we go. I said Nutri. That's the Okavango Delta. And that's okay to Google it because I'd rather you learn about the absolutely gorgeous Okavango Delta than just say, I don't know. Good job, Daryl. It's the Okavango. Yes. Lots of interesting. I did a little video, a little storybook about the Okavango Delta on my channel because it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, which country occupies the north half of Cyprus? You guys are going to get this right away. I can tell. You're the kind of people who know this kind of politics. What country occupies, not Greece, Turkey. Julio got it first. It is Turkey. Yes, Turkey occupies the northern half of Cyprus. Only well, guess from Top Gear. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's, um, Turkey is the answer. No, um, my chat, Julio got Turkey first. Oh, but you got Akavango first. Anyway, it is Turkey. <laughs> Um, what is the largest city in Nigeria? This one needs a sticky. 
What's the largest city in Nigeria? Yep, Lagos. Wife who got it. It is Lagos. Another one of those places that, like, it is not the capital, but um, it's very, very well known. I get a sticky. It is Lagos. Let me give you another one. Um, what type of islands make up Tuvalu? Pure geography question. What type of islands make up the nation of Tuvalu? What kind of islands are they? First of all, if you know my channel, you know there's two kinds of islands. An archipelago is just a group of islands. There's a lot of archipelagos in the world. Um, there are two types of islands. If you pay attention to my Oceania videos, it is obviously one of those two. And then um, it's not a floating island either. <laughs> um, it's not a volcanic. Not volcanic. It is not volcanic. It's the other one. It was not formed via volcano, or at least volcanic rock. All natural lands, tectonic. Um, what kind of substance is the island made out of if it's not, it is an atoll, but what are atolls made out of? If it's not made out of volcanic rock, what substance makes up the islands in an atoll? Coral, there we go, why you got it. It's a coral atoll. Oh, that the islands are all coral atolls. Sand, maybe in the in the Persian Gulf, but it is coral islands. I guess there's three kinds of islands then, man-made, coral, and volcanic. <laughs> yeah, they are coral atolls. Um, dum, 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 dum. All right, easy one for history nerds. What are the two main rivers in Iraq that bordered or that made the borders of Mesopotamia. The two rivers in Iraq that made up the borders of Mesopotamia. Tigris is one. Wife who got it? Not Tigre. That might be a typo or an autocorrect. And Euphrates. Good job. Euphrates and Tigris. Tigris and Euphrates. An easy one for any, any history buff knows Tigris and Euphrates. Good job. Um... What is the, the Volga? Nope, that's in Africa. What's the nickname for the country of Lesotho? The country of Lesotho, which is located in Southern Africa in the Drakensberg Mountains. What is its nickname? Which um, has to do with its high elevation up in the Drakensberg Mountains. The hat country, <laughs> kind of. Land of diamonds, not quite. They have diamonds, but it's not as big as the other countries nearby um they do have hats but that's not the, the nickname of the country um it's a ski resort in africa <laughs> pretty much there is skiing there the way up their country you're on the right track <laughs> um i was watching a tourist video of someone going there um they they flew from somewhere in south africa and the the airport had this slogan, this nickname all over it. Cloud country, very close. The mile high country, very, you guys are on the right track. Um, kingdom of the blank is what it's called. It is a kingdom still. Kingdom of the blank. What do you think? What do you think? It is the kingdom of the blank. Uh, uh, the sky. Yep, I'll give that to Wyatt. It is called the Kingdom of the Sky. Isn't that pretty? Because the entire country has an incredibly high elevation. They have the world's highest, lowest point in a country. That's how high their elevation is. What's the largest lake in Uganda? Yeah, the sky, Callum, yes. What's the largest lake in Uganda? I've got my nails on. I can tap on things. It's Bolivia. Bolivia has the um, Victoria. Yeah, I threw in an easy one. Bolivia is the world's highest capital city. And they have very high elevations. Oh, like, does Bolivia have the highest lowest point? Oh, it's Lesotho. The lake. Yeah, it's Lake Victoria. Yes. 
the largest lake in Africa. It's not Lake Titicaca. Oh, the L Lake Titicaca. Uh, no. Um, Lesotho has the world's highest lowest point. Lake Titicaca is the world's highest navigable lake. But anyway, Cuba is the largest island in the Caribbean, but other than the main island, what's the largest island belonging to Cuba? Cuba is the largest island in the Caribbean, but other than the main island, what's the largest island that belongs to Cuba? So de Encanto? No. <laughs> it is um, Isla blank. Santiago de Cuba? No. Hispaniola, which you know is wrong because Hispaniola does not belong to Cuba at all. No, it's Juventud. Wife who got it. It is not Guantanamo. That's not an island. It is Isla de la Juventud is the answer. Isla de la Juventud. Island of Youth. Um, Fiji, meanwhile, has two main islands. It's not even Cuba's anymore. Hush has two main islands. Which island is home to the capital city of Suva? Which island of Fiji is home to the capital city, Suva? There's two, I know, it's, it's Oceania. It's such a fascinating place and no one knows anything about it. They do make Fiji water there. What are their names? Well, if I tell you, that's that's the question. What's the name of the island where you can find the capital city of Suva? I'm glad you're having fun, Alberto. Still, thank you for that super chat. I really appreciate that. That is so kind. Um, yeah. Viti Levu. That's a new chair. I got it. It is Viti Levu is the name of the island where you can find the capital of Fiji. And they do make Fiji water there. Um... Equatorial Guinea is building a new capital city. Since their current capital city is on an island off the mainland, they are building a new capital in the center of the mainland. Uh, what is it going to be called if, when it's ever completed? It may not ever be completed, but um, what will, what is it going to be called if it's ever finished in Equatorial Guinea? Oh, dear Lord. Yeah, see, it's good to know geography. It's not named after the president, but the, the president is very adamant about building this city. Very adamant, and making it very westernized and everything in um, poor little Equatorial Guinea. <laughs> the capital's Malibu, right, I believe. It sounds dictatorial than I remembered the U.S. I know, like technically, like you think that, wow, planned capitals are weird. You have to remember that um, the United States has a planned capital. <laughs> Malibu's the current capital city. I want the name of the new capital city that they are building in the center of the country. In my video, I went there on Google Earth to show you. There we go. Cidad de la Paz, says Wyatt. And it's okay to Google. I'd rather you learn than just say, I don't know, and just sit around doing nothing. Be active learn stuff. It's going to be called Ciudad de la Paz. If it's ever completed, who knows? It's a huge project. It may not, you know, <laughs> no, it's, um, they're not really stealing from Bolivia. Bolivia, well, I mean, there's so many countries that have had, um, planned capitals. There's so many, so many. And like, um, Egypt's building a new capital, you know, like, um, it's, there's so many countries have planned capitals, so it's not an unusual thing. It just seems weird, but it really isn't. You know, like the United States has a planned capital, La Paz. Oh, I see. It means peace. I see what you mean. La Paz, Bolivia. But they're Ciudad de la Paz. Besides, Bolivia has two capitals anyway. Azerbaijan is home to um, volcanoes, but not lava volcanoes. Um, what? Do the volcanoes in Azerbaijan spit out? Just rename an already existing one like a Russian dictator. Funny. Yeah, Egypt, Indonesia, Brazil, Pakistan. The Romans planned London once upon a time, but not as a capital. It doesn't spew oil. That's off. That's in um the water, not rocks. Not water. That's a good guess, though. I like that. That would be cool. Not water. What? 
thing does um, not want. <laughs> That'd be crazy. They, they get oil off the, the coast of Baku. Not sap. It's a, just, it's not that complicated. <laughs> uh, not sulfur. It, they're not really volcanic volcanoes. <laughs> if Azerbaijan spewed oil, it'd be the 51st U.S. state. Not if Azerbaijanis had anything to say about that. They're very fiercely territorial. Just talk to Armenia. <laughs> Um, not salt. That's pretty cool. Not snow. That would be wild. Um, yeah, not methane. Stone tart is here. It's not methane. Farts stop. It might smell a little bit like farts, but it's not sulfur. It's um kind of south of Baku, also, where you can find these volcanoes. Eggs. <laughs> the heck? <laughs> no, it's a very natural thing. What do these volcanoes spit out? Azerbaijan's also home to an accidental fire. Tar, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. OMG facts. Um, air. <laughs> that would be wild. There you go. Callum got it. It's mud. It's mud volcanoes. Yes. They are mud volcanoes, which apparently, like, you cannot call those volcanoes because volcanoes have specific qualities. But, um, yeah, they, they spit out mud. <laughs> but, yeah, Azerbaijan has an eternal flame, an accidental one. But now it's like a, a tourist attraction that they're very proud of, and they're known as the Land of Fire. Um, what river splits the capital of Hungary in two? Yeah, Pennsylvania has Centralia, um, which is not celebrated. <laughs> like the fire is in Azerbaijan. Learn that from Eurovision. The Danube, yes. Acid Nutri got it. Ludmila got it. The Danube River splits Buda and Pest in two. two. Now it's one city. Um, the Danube, yes. What's the largest waterfall in Zambia and in Zimbabwe? That is the, um, I think, the largest waterfall by volume in the world. Talked about it a lot on my channel. Yep, Victoria Falls. Victoria Falls is it. Why you got it first? Mosi Oatunya. Victoria Falls. It's a beautiful place. Um, I didn't write a fact for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Look at that. If anyone's seen my Antigua and Barbuda video, what's the name of the town you can find on Barbuda that's named after the person who used to personally own it? The island, I mean. Personally owned the island. The, the only town, really, that's on um, Barbuda is named after the guy who used to personally own it. Really found everything after the queen. Well, that was Dr. Livingston. <laughs> he named it Victoria Falls. Oh, we got music. Um, who remembers? I talked about this guy a lot in my not cook. That was a character. Um, we got singing. <laughs> you know, I love people that walk by my house singing along to their music at like the top of their lungs. That's awesome. Not not Drake. Not Sir Francis Drake. Um, it's it's not a figure that you would know. He's not really in history books. He just managed to lease the island from England for the price of one fat sheep per year. And he turned it into part of his um, sugar plantation. Not Captain Morgan, that's a pirate. It's not someone you'd know. Like, I've never been taught about this guy in history. But he became stupid wealthy. The question is, what town on Barbuda is named after the person who used to own the island of Barbuda? Um, he, he became a sugar baron. His whole family moved out there. They lived off the land. They had tons of slaves. It's not Mansa Musa. Barbuda was the vacation island for his family. And there we go. Calm God, it's Codrington. Yes. Codrington was this guy. Apparently, the, the slaves on Antigua were very brutally treated at the sugar plantation, but on Barbuda, that was the vacation spot. 
It's such an English name, right? And the name, the town's still called Codrington. It got wrecked in a hurricane a few years ago, but it's still there. It's called Codrington. Um, what's the name of the large hot spring on Dominica? It's the largest lake in Dominica. And um, it's a huge hot spring. What is it known as? It's another big tourist place in Dominica. What's the name of the big old hot spring on Dominica? And it's an English speaking country, so it's an English word. Ask me Caribbean geography. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know about the Caribbean. Not a lot of people know about the Caribbean. Such an interesting place, especially Dominica, in that they didn't, um, they were very violent indigenous people that lived there, so that the English and French agreed they wouldn't bother it until too many slaves were running away to there and they felt like they had to. So most of the original forest is still there. It's not very developed in a way that the other Caribbean islands are. And Dominica is really, really focused on preserving all of that beautiful natural forest. And this lake slash hot spring is like right in the middle of it. Apparently it's, it's a long hike to get to it, but it's worth seeing because it's a weird, it's a weird spot. <laughs> Cause Dominica is a volcanic island. So it has hot springs and volcanoes and stuff. What is this name of this large hot spring? The fact that Dominica and Dominican Republic aren't the same thing. I know, it's so complicated. Who named them that? Um, Dominican Republic was named by um, Columbus's brother, I want to say, because he was named the, um, the, like, the first leader, the first, like, mayor of uh, Sulphur Springs. Is I mean, you're on the right track. Dominicans play baseball. As a nutrient god, it's boiling lake. Dominicans love their baseball. My goodness. Um, but yeah, Columbus's brother was the first governor of, um, I want to say San Salvador, but that's not it. <laughs> the capital city. Um, but yeah. and um, oh, I forget how Dominica got its name. I talked about it too in my video. Dominica is also a republic. True. True, true, true. What island chain in Micronesia can you find the ray stones? There's four main island chains in Micronesia. Which one can you find the ray stones? Or rye stones. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Dominican order. Um, I honestly don't remember. Do I have my notebook around here? Uh, I need it for my notes tonight. Religious order, probably. Micronesian island. It's a little archipelago, not the Marshall Islands. Here's my little book. I'm all set to script out Kazakhstan tonight. And also Qatar. Let me find Dominica. I'm sure I wrote it down. But what... What... Archipelago in Micronesia, can you find the ray stones slash rye stones? Not Northern Mariana. That's a United States territory. Dominica, did I write it down? Uh-oh, maybe I didn't. Oh, Callum got it. It's the Yap Islands. Good job. It is the Yap Islands. Um, I didn't write it down. Darn. Bummer. Oh, stop. I did. I did write it down. Um, Christopher Columbus named it because he sailed past it on a Sunday. Domingo. And then once the British took over, they, they gave it a, a British sounding name. Um, but yeah, that, that's what it was. It was named after a Sunday. <laughs> he sailed by on Sunday, November 3rd, 1493. That's how Dominica got its name. Columbus named that one. Um, and obviously Santo Domingo's named after the saint, right? 
Um, if you want to visit the, the ruins of Angkor Wat in Cambodia, what city would you go to as like the jumping off point? This city was built specifically for tourists visiting Angkor Wat, or it's been developed around the Angkor Wat tourism industry. What's the name of the city? It's not Phnom Penh, that's the capital. It's like the, the only other city that I could name off the top of my head in Cambodia because it's it's has a huge international airport and tons of hotels and everything, lots of other little tour stuff there to see. And of course, like constant tours of Angkor Wat, which is just nearby. This whole city was developed just for tourism. How come Dominican Republic has a um, similar name? Because, oh, Sim Reap, you got it. Acid Nutri got it, Sim Reap. Um, because they were named by Spanish people. Um, because it's named after um, Santo Domingo, named after the saint. Whereas um, Dominica is named after the word for Sunday, which is, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me. Which is Domingo. Domingo is the word for Sunday. So he had named it Domingo. Yes, Domingo. I whenever I have to think of a, a Latin word, I have to think of the French word and then the the, the other language comes to me because in yeah, in French it's Dimash. Oh, we got another bot. Everyone take a shot every time a bot comes into the chat. Report. Give me a second to report it. And then it will stop. Dimash. Yes, there we go. Dimash is French for Sunday. So I'm like, do you want Domingo? <laughs> Domingo. Um, what exclave of Angola has been trying for independence for like 30 years, but Angola refuses to recognize it because this exclave has a ton of oil in it. <laughs> they don't want to let it go. What's the name of the exclave of Angola that has been trying for independence for quite a while? They have a little exclave, yep, the tiny one above Congo. <laughs> that is where it is located. What's its name? They have an exclave. A lot of countries have exclaves. Uh, not Scotland. <laughs> the heck? Um, it's funny, like, if I ever try to trivia someone and be like, name a country with an exclave, they're like, um, 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 um. And I'm like, time's up. The U.S. <laughs> the U.S. has an exclave called Alaska. <laughs> Uh, not Catalonia. Why well, forgot? It's Cabinda. Cabinda is the name of Angola's exclave. Cabinda. And they have a ton of oil. And Angola has profited off that incredibly. So they were trying for independence before the discovery of oil. But once they discovered oil, Angola's like, you're never leaving. <laughs> you're part of us forever. Poor Cabinda. What um, northeast area of Poland is, um, was, a, okay, let me try that. This area of northeast Poland has a dog breed named after it. What is it? That's a, that's a better way. This, this area of northeast Poland has a dog breed named after it. What is it? There we go, Pomerania. Julio got it first. Julio was fastest that time. It is Pomerania. Pomerania. What two areas within Israel are Palestinians still allowed to occupy? What's the name of the two regions that's now within Israel that Palestinians are allowed to occupy? You know, they've been living there for like a thousand years. Gaza and the West Bank, yes. We're still talking about Dominica and Dominican Republic. I have to swap mail at their embassies. In Slovenia and Slovakia, yeah. Um, Cisjordania, Gaza. That's funny. It's an interesting way to say West Bank. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a whole agency in Slovenia and Slovakia that just sorts out Slovenia, Slovakia mail. That's funny. Um, what is the name of the, yes, Free Palestine. What's the name of the Gulf to the north of Latvia? It's named after their capital. Well, the capital city is named after the Gulf or vice versa. I'm not sure. 
What's the name of the large gulf to the north of Latvia? Yep, Riga, the Gulf of Riga. I shouldn't have said capital city, that gave it away. The Gulf of Riga is the name of it. Very large gulf. What's the autonomous region in Africa that is claimed by Morocco? What region of Africa is claimed by Morocco? Asset Nutria got it. Western Sahara. Julio got it. Um, it's not called Spanish Sahara anymore. They call it Western Sahara. I guess it's um, very offensive to say that. <laughs> um, what body of water um, borders the city of Muscat? What body of water, let's say Vilnius, no, that's in Lithuania. What body of water borders the city of Muscat? The Persian Gulf, it's a part of the Persian Gulf, a very specific part. It's kind of like where the Persian Gulf meets the Arabian Sea. It's not Persian Gulf, it's not Arabian Sea. It's a specific little gulf, not the Gulf of Aden, that's the other end of the peninsula. Gulf of Aden, um, yeah. Okay. Why you got it? It's the Gulf of Oman is the name of it. I didn't want to say the country name because I would give it away. Um, the Gulf of Oil, the Gulf Storm, stop. The Gulf of Oman is its name. What tree has been historically grown in Lebanon and is featured on their flag? What tree has historically been grown in Lebanon? Yep, wife, we got a cedar. It's a cedar tree, not a pine tree. Very close. It is a cedar tree. Lebanese cedar wood is very, very famous. There's a lot of, um, I know, so close. Christmas. There's a lot of Christmas tree. <laughs> no cedar. Um, apparently, there's some Egyptian sarcophagi that are made out of Lebanese cedar and lots of artifacts found in like Israel, Jerusalem, that area. There's a lot of Lebanese cedar objects found. Um, what's the nickname of the bizarre circular volcano, volcanic formation in Mauritania that I showed you guys on Google Earth because it's so bizarre from above? What's its nickname? Name of the very bizarre circular volcanic shape in the desert in Mauritania. As Nutri got it, Eye of the Sahara. It's so cool. I had to show you guys on Google Earth when I did the Mauritania video because it's so bizarre to look at. Um, what's the large impenetrable forest in Panama? As Nutri is going to get this right away. The large impenetrable forest in the uh, yeah I don't, Darien Gap yeah the Darien Gap, um, kind of like at the the southeast eastern part of Panama. Um, um, what kind of bizarre trees can you find on the Yemeni island of Socotra? Don't worry, Wyatt, you're fine. Don't worry. What bizarre tree can you find on the Yemeni island of Socotra? They're, they're absolutely freaky weird. <laughs> what are they called? The very bizarre, freakish trees you can only find on the island of Socotra that belongs to Yemen. Socotra being like, they're cool, not a bonsai tree. Um, they're, they're cool nature island. The explosive trees that shoot needles and poison, they do not do that. <laughs> they are very famous for their sap, though. Their sap is used in a lot of varieties of ways on the island, mostly for dyes. But um, apparently, the, like, not amber trees. There you go. Calum got it. It's the dragon's blood tree is what they're called. They are weird looking. And their sap is dark red. It looks like it's bleeding. The dragon's blood tree. And you can still visit Socotra, even though there's like a huge civil war going on in Yemen. It's very far away from the mainland and it's very peaceful there. So you can still visit Yemen. 
during their really horrific civil war that's happening right now. Um, what river flows through the capital city of Lisbon in Portugal? What river flows through the capital city of Lisbon, Portugal? Tejo, yeah. <laughs> Tejo or the Tagus. Tagus, I've heard it so many different ways, but I'll, Tejo is the Portuguese name, so Julio gets that. <laughs> Tagus, yes. Why is that the Sri Lankan flag? Or is it a... From here it looks like the Sri Lankan flag. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, what's the largest city in the United Arab Emirates? What's the largest city in the United Arab Emirates? Texas. <laughs> the Texas River. <laughs> Dubai is the answer. Yes, everyone knows Dubai. That's an easy one. Dubai, Dubai, Dubai. Um, what's the name of the northern region of Finland that's home of the Sami indigenous people? And Santa. What area of northern Finland slash Scandinavia is home to the Sami people? Yep, Callum got it. It's Lapland. Yes. Lapland is the answer. Waifu got it. It's Lapland. Lapland. Good job, everybody. Lapland. What's the highest peak in Tanzania? I took you guys there on Google Earth too, on my Tanzania video. What's the highest peak in Tanzania? Aren't the Sami people? Yeah, they're in Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Callum got it first, Kilimanjaro, but everyone else knew it too. It's Mount Kilimanjaro. Such an incredible place. And the Sami are interesting people. Um... What's the name of the large mountain next to Cape Town, South Africa? What's the name of the large mountain next to Cape Town, South Africa? There, as a nutrient, Table Mountain, yes. Table Mountain is the answer. Um, moving on to Kenya that I just put out on Thursday. What large port city borders the Indian Ocean and was the former capital of Kenya? Uh, yep, Caleb got it. It's Mombasa. Nairobi is inland, actually. Mombasa is the answer, the former capital of Kenya, before they built Nairobi. Another planned capital, right? Don't forget about Mombasa. It's a cool place. And then I wrote a trivia for Bahrain because I was planning to do the stream ages ago tomorrow when my Bahrain video is coming out. Um, but I'll ask it to you anyway. What's the name of the singular tree that lives alone in the desert of Bahrain? There's a big old tree that grows all by itself in the middle of the desert. What is its name? Lots of questions about trees, I realize now. <laughs> like famous trees. What's the name of the tree that grows all by itself? The very lonely tree. Aww. Tree of the stubborn. It's not a very lonely tree. It gets a lot of tourists. <laughs> a lot of people go to see it and they sit on it. Like, I would be too. What if you broke off a branch of this ancient tree? <laughs> it feels so bad. It is not called those things. It grows in the middle of... The Bahraini Desert, the bench tree. No, don't sit. I wouldn't be so afraid to sit on it. Pesky yep, wife who got it. It's the tree of life. Yes. Um, but it, I mean, I guess it's encouraged to just hang out on it because there's lots of pictures of people just chilling on the tree. So, oh well, it is called the tree of life. And that was the end of my geography section. I omitted some of the harder ones. Um, I don't want you guys to struggle too much, but I made it a little bit too hard. A joke. <laughs> it's called the tree of life. Yes. Um, how about, since I'm doing Kazakhstan tonight, what's the name of the Soviet space station in Kazakhstan that's now co-owned by Russia in Kazakhstan? It's where Sputnik was launched from. What's the name of the Soviet space station? It's now located in Kazakhstan, Baran, no. 
Are you trying to say Borat? <laughs> it does start with a B, though. My goodness, no. I summoned Putin. <laughs> Report. I shouldn't have said, um, it's not Nur Sultan. Ah. Stop so I can block you. Russian bots. It's not Almaty. Buran was a Soviet space shuttle. Oh, okay. Then it was definitely launched from there. I don't know. Um, um, Almaty's in Kazakhstan. There we go. Kelm got it. It's the Baikonur space. The Baikonur Cosmodrome is what it's called. The Baikonur Cosmodrome is the name of it. Um, then after that, my next country is Qatar. Um, how about this? It is very close to Uzbekistan. Yeah. How about this? In 2019 slash 2020, Saudi Arabia and Qatar had a bit of a political rift. What did Saudi Arabia threaten to do to the landscape of Qatar? That's the Kazakhstan flag. Quiet. Awesome. What did Saudi Arabia threaten they would do to the geography of Qatar? My computer's dying. Let me go grab the, uh, not bomb. That would be horrible. Let me grab my charger real quick. Make it an island. Yes, Callum got it. They were going to close off the natural area that connects it to Saudi Arabia and make it into an island so it would no longer border Saudi Arabia. Let's see, let's see. I need the charger so my computer doesn't die because I want to keep going. Give me my charger. Leave the chat, by the way. Anytime I walk away from the computer, people leave in droves. I'm still here. Close a bridge. And they were going to remove the strip of land that connects it to Saudi Arabia. Isn't that wild? Hey, the guy that has to... Honk his card has started this year. He's here every night. There we go. Plug in, please. There we go. All right. But yeah, they resolved their conflict in, I want to say, 2021. And now that is not going to happen anymore. Here we go. Ta -da. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's see. After Qatar, I'm doing Libya, I think. Um, it's a good Libya question. Being an island's kind of cool, though. Yeah, but being an island against your will isn't. <laughs> um... Libya, Libya, Libya. All of my books on Libya are from like three, four, or five years ago when the Civil War was still going on. That Civil War ended in 2020. So, yay, no war. Um, oh, that could have been a trivia question. What year did the Libyan Civil War end? <laughs> Darn. Um, Gaddafi. I don't want to ask. I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> I like to talk about dictators too much. Um, 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 what's the second largest city in Libya after the capital city of Tripoli? Um, it was, yep, Benghazi is the answer. Yes, I said no tree got it. It's Benghazi. Uh -huh. And then after that, I have Mongolia. Um, who is the, is this even ASMR? Totally. Ayla Grace, it's educational ASMR trivia. Uh, who is the international airport in Ulaanbaatar named after? Who is the Ulaanbaatar international airport named after? Because it's not called that. Some president? Nope. It's Genghis Khan. Yes, Genghis Khan. It's it's called um, Genghis Khan. 
um, Genghis Khan International. <laughs> it's, it's called, it's named after Genghis Khan. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, what do I have after that? Oh, I haven't researched any countries after that, so I don't want to ask questions. Should we do a capital city quiz? Like the German dance group. Is there a dance group called Genghis Khan? That's funny. Go for it. Yes. Okay. Capital cities time. This is going to be easy. I'm just going to see what's the capital of blank and see who gets it first. I have them all listed here. Again, these are all countries that um, I've already covered on the channel. So, um, yeah. What's the capital of Armenia? What's the capital of Armenia? What's the capital of Armenia? Julio got it first with Yerevan. Yerevan. Julio's the winner there. It's going to be the fastest typing competition here. What's the capital of South Korea? What's the capital of South Korea? Uh, Callum got it first with Seoul. Good job, you guys. What's the capital of Eritrea? Tricky one. What's the capital of Eritrea? Speaking of dictatorships, that country is whack. Acid Nutria got it. It's Asmara. Yes. Um, it's wild because 99% of the country doesn't have access to the internet. Um, by government decree, not just because they're ASMR, uh, because the government says so. It's not like they can't access it. They, the government literally restricts the internet to almost everyone but like government workers. So I got a comment from Eritrea on my Eritrea video. I was like stunned. And it was a person saying like, this video is great. You're absolutely right about everything in it. And I was like, they have internet? <laughs> Like, wow, that, that was like the most amazing comment I've ever got because I did not ever think I would get a comment. It's like getting a comment from North Korea, basically. What's the capital city of Grenada? ASMR, I still like that. What's the capital city of the island of Grenada? So it might be a little tricky because not a lot of people even know where Grenada is. I know it's in the Caribbean, in the Lesser Antilles. And it's an English-speaking country, so it's a very English name. <laughs> Port Portsmouth. <laughs> Funny. No, think Saint blank. All of the uh, New London. Ask Ronnie. <laughs> All of the provinces, I think their provinces on Grenada are named after saints. They're all Saint blank. Saint Thomas. Um, I'll give it to Callum. It's called Saint George's. St. George apostrophe S. St. George's. It's like St. George's what? <laughs> but it's called St. George's. It's the capital of Grenada. It's a complete guess. I know. If I said St. It's like just name saints. <laughs> What's the capital of Sweden? What's the capital of Sweden? Callum got it first. It is Stockholm. Stockholm is the answer. Stockholm is the capital of Sweden. What's the capital of Australia? What is the capital of Australia? It's another planned capital city, right? Yep. Callum got it. Canberra. Canberra. Good job, you guys. Canberra. Good job. You guys are so smart. I'm so proud of all of you because that's, that's a tricky one for some people. What's the capital of Bangladesh? What's the capital of Bangladesh? Callum got it. It's uh, actually Dhaka, not Dakar, because that's another country <laughs> coming up. So I'll give that to Acid Nutria. It's Dhaka, just Dhaka. Yeah, Dakar is a different capital city in another part of the world. I won't say where because it's going to come up. <laughs> Dhaka is the answer. That goes to Acid Nutria. What's the capital of Tonga? Yeah, Dakar Rally. Yeah, exactly. What's the capital of Tonga? 
Happyville. No. <laughs> it's not Tonga. It's not like the mountain. It's not Tonga, 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 Hunga, Tonga, Ha'a Pali. <laughs> it's not Tonga City. Oh, Acid Nutria got it. Nukua Lofa. Acid Nutria is the fastest Googler tonight. The answer is Nukua Lofa. Good job, good job, good job. What's the capital of Zimbabwe? What is the capital of Zimbabwe? Acid Nutri got it first with Harari. Yes, it is Harari. What is the capital of Sudan? What is the capital of Sudan? The sticky on my thumb. Acid Nutri got it with Khartoum. You know your capitals, huh? Uh, Mogadishu is the capital of another country, Cal. That I won't mention because it will come up. But it is Khartoum. <laughs> um, let me cross that off real quick. It's the capital of Syria. What's the capital of Syria? Who's going to get it first? I mentioned it earlier in the stream. Callum got it first with Damascus. Callum was fastest that time. It is Damascus. Yes. The world's oldest continuously inhabited capital city. It's not Aleppo. <laughs> when we talked about Aleppo, we talked about Damascus. It is Damascus. Let me stick this thumbnail back on. I did it crooked. Ah. Oh no. Okay, I think I saved it. <laughs> What's Aleppo? It is a city in Syria that is the world's oldest currently or continuously inhabited city and the second largest in Syria. Um, what is the capital of the Philippines? What's the capital of the Philippines? Callum got it first with Manila. Yes. It is Manila. Good job, you guys. It's only one L, by the way. Manila. It's not like vanilla. It just sounds like vanilla. Um, Kazan City, you're funny. You're listing all the second largest cities or the largest city. What's the capital of Serbia? What's the capital of Serbia? I need fan again. It's getting on. Um, Julio got it first with Belgrade. Julio was first that time. It is Belgrade. What's the capital of Croatia? We're in the Balkans right now. <laughs> What's the capital of Croatia? Too many Balkan countries. I know there's a bunch. Callum got it first with Zagreb. It is Zagreb. Such an interesting little corner of Europe. What's the capital of Turkey? What's the capital of Turkey? It's not its largest city. Julio got it again with Ankara. It is not Istanbul. It is Ankara. It used to be Istanbul. It became Ankara um, like 100 years ago, in like 1920. Not Constantinople. It's not called that anymore. Oh, was I lagging? Am I okay? I th What's the capital of Norway? You look a little laggy. I hope it's okay. What is the capital of Norway? Izmir? No. <laughs> oh, I think I'm lagging. Should have made it bot fun. <laughs> Best city in Turkey, right? <laughs> country named after a bird it is not um i'll give that i'll give that both to acid nutri and waifu because i'm sure acid nutri is trying to say oslo but type too fast it is oslo um no turkey was not named after the bird <laughs> not at all turkey is called that because the turkish people live there so it's the land of the turks 
Um, what's the capital of Ghana? Mm -hmm. Turkey is the Tur anyway. Phone flipped on typing out slow. <laughs> What's the capital of Ghana? Oh, Accra. Yes, acid nutrient. Got it. It's Accra. It's the name of the capital. I'm starting to lag. Is it okay? I know my, my computer for some reason can only handle live streaming for too long before the lag starts, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Let me know if it gets bad, okay? And then we'll call it a night. What's the capital of Mozambique? What's the capital of Mozambique? It used to be Mozambique Island. <laughs> Julio got it. It's Maputo. It is Maputo. During colonial times, it was Mozambique Island. It is now Maputo. Speaking of Southern Africa, what's the capital of Namibia? What's the capital of Namibia? What's the capital of Namibia? Oh, as soon as you got it, sorry, it's Windhoek. Yeah, it's it's spelled funny. It's old timey Jeremy Settlers. Windhoek, and why he got it too? It is Windhoek. Sounds very Dutch. It's it's German. Yeah, wife was right. It's a German name. It's not weird. It was a German territory. What's the capital of East Timor or Timor Leste? What's the capital of East Timor? Ooh, that's a nutrient as fast as Dili. Yes, Dili is the capital. I get that mixed up with Dhaka in Bangladesh. It's the names are too similar. Dili is the answer. What's the capital of the Czech Republic or Czechia? What's the capital of Czechia or the Czech Republic in Doha? Yeah, Callum got it first. It is Prague. Callum is the winner that time. Um, what's the capital of Brunei? <laughs> this is an interesting name. What's the capital of Brunei Darussalam? What is the capital of Brunei? Oh, good job, Julio. Bandar Seri Bhagawan. Good job. Good job, Julio. I know. Bandar Seri Bhagawan is the name of their capital city. It's so fun to say. Bandar Seri Bhagawan. Anyway, what's the capital of Tunisia? name of Thailand's capital? No, <laughs> we're not saying that. <laughs> Callum got it first with Tunis. Callum was the first one there. Tunis is the capital of Tunisia, named after the city. Not Carthage. Carthage is near Tunis, but it's not in. What's Speaking of crazy names, what's the capital of Madagascar? Negative 500 BC moment. Yeah, pretty much. What's the capital of Madagascar? I'll give that to Ashton Nutria. Antananarivo. Yeah. Antananarivo is the name of their capital city. Which is another fun one to say. Antananarivo. Malagasy is the coolest language, but very hard to pronounce. Jeff Tress says, move it, move it. <laughs> that would be funny. What's the capital of Ireland? What's the capital of Ireland? going to get it first. Acid Nutria was first. It is Dublin. Yes, Dublin. Callum got it. Um, yeah, Dublin is the answer. Waifu got it. What's the capital of Jordan? What's the capital of Jordan? Another very, very old city. I said Nutri got it with Amman. Julio got it too. Amman is the answer. Amman is the capital. What's the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina? I should probably transition to whispers because people are going to sleep in my building. What's the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina? 
wife who got it first. It's Sarajevo. Sarajevo. Well, actually, Ashley Nutri got it first. Just with the typo spelling. As long as I can understand what you're trying to say, that counts. Don't worry about typos too much. But Sarajevo is the answer. Oops, I didn't cross out Tonga. Okay, what's the capital of Guyana? What's the capital of Guyana? Oh, my pen's dying. Ooh, I said Nutri, good job. It is Georgetown. Yes, Georgetown is the capital of Guyana. What's the capital of Sierra Leone? We talked about this during geography. <laughs> What's the capital of Sierra Leone? My pen is dead. Oh, well. Let me grab another one. Uh, wife who got it for Freetown. It's Freetown. Because remember, it was established by freed slaves. So it's a Freetown. Um, what's the capital of Iceland? What's the capital of Iceland? That's Liberia. They, Liberia and Sierra Leone were both established by freed slaves. Callum got it first. Reykjavik. Good job. Reykjavik. Reykjavik. With all the different spellings of it. Don't worry. It is Reykjavik. What's the capital of Myanmar? What's the capital of Myanmar? It's no longer Yangon. It's not Rangoon. Or Rangoon is Yangon. Acid Nutri got it. It's Napito. It's Napito. It, it, I want to say it was, um, you were very close. It's N-A-Y. Um, N-A-Y-P-W-E-D-A-W. Napito. It, that's another plant capital. It was Yangon until I want to say 2011. Around there. But now it's Napito. What is the capital of Montenegro? What is the capital of Montenegro. I'm going to turn this light down. I feel like it's getting hot. I mean, of course it's hot, but Ooh, who got it first? Julio got it first. It is Podgorica. Oh, too dark. Okay. Podgorica is the answer. Julio got it first. Podgorica. What's the capital of Greece? What's the capital of Greece? Callum got it first with Athens, yes. It is not, it is not Sparta. <laughs> Sparta is not really a thing anymore. Um, while we're in that corner of Europe, I guess, kind of north of it, what's the capital of Slovenia? What's the capital of Slovenia? Ooh, Asinutri got it first. Ljubljana is the answer. It is Ljubljana. Good job, good job, good job. Um, we're still in Europe. What's the capital of Lithuania? What's the capital of Lithuania? Callum got it first with Vilnius. It is Vilnius. Yes, Asinutri got it. It's Vilnius. What's the capital of Cameroon? Hello. Who emailed me? Um, oh, it's the nail company <laughs> that I use. What's the capital of Cameroon? It's kind of Frenchy. Kind of, sort of, not really, but it would be easy to pronounce in French. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's definitely easy to pronounce in French, but I don't think it's a French word. It might be like the, the French pronunciation of in, um, there you go. Hasid Nutri got it. It's Yaoundé. Yaoundé is the answer. Libreville is not Cameroon. It's a different country. That is coming up. What's the capital of the Dominican Republic? So we're talking about Dominican Republic so much. What's the capital of the Dominican Republic? Uh, doesn't want to stick. 
I said Nutri got it for Santo Domingo is the answer. Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo. Um, some letters mixed. I see that. <laughs> What's the capital of the Gambia? What's the capital of the Gambia? Not Dakar. Nope. That's a nearby country. That, yeah. <laughs> the capital of the Gambia. <laughs> Another city that's really fun to say. Who's going to Google it first? What's the capital of the Gambia? What is the capital of the Gambia? Who's going to get it first? I'll take that. It is Banjul. <laughs> Banjul. I never thought about that. The U.S. is banning Jewel. But yeah, it is Banjul is the name of their capital. Banjul. Where you can find um, Kunta Kinte Island. What's the capital of Haiti? What's the capital of Haiti? I said Nutri got Port Al Prince. Yes, it's Port Al Prince. Um, well, we're in the Caribbean. What's the capital of St. Lucia? What's the capital of St. Lucia? It's the capital of St. Lucia. Oh, Jeff got it. It is Castries. Yes. Castries is the capital of St. Lucia. Ooh, what's the capital of Nauru? Mm -hmm, Castries, good job, Sharma. Yes, Castries. What's the capital of Nauru? This is one of the things that makes Nauru so interesting. No clue, you're on the right track. Yep, Dr. Pickle, they don't have one. Technically, they do not have a capital city. Actually, Nauru is not a city-state. It's the world's smallest republic. Um, Nauru does not have an official capital, but all of their government stuff is in the town of Yaren. Has the smallest GDP. Um, no, it once had the highest GDP in the world during the 80s. Nauru is just full of the weirdest facts. It had the highest GDP per capita in the world in the 1980s. A very bizarre country. Yeah, all of their government stuff is in the little town of Yaren next to their airport. But that is not the capital. They do not have a capital city in Nauru. Um, what's the capital of Sri Lanka? Wait, how? Um, interesting question. Um, the phosphate mines were so prosperous that the governments made tons of money. And since there's only a couple, like 10,000-ish people on Nauru, that gave them the highest GDP per capita. <laughs> yeah, Colombo is an acceptable answer. Um, there's a much longer name that is escaping me. It's like Sri... Jayana something Kota, but um, Kota is the other acceptable name for that. But Colombo is like its main capital area. I'm pretty sure Colombo is like the administrative capital. Nauru is just weird. I have a whole video on Nauru. This channel exists because of Nauru. Because the facts were just so weird I had to share it with somebody. <laughs> What's the capital of Georgia? Not the U.S. state of Georgia. The country of Georgia. What's the capital of Georgia? Or Sakartvelu. <laughs> Julio got it. It is Tbilisi. Tbilisi is the capital of Georgia. Um, what's the capital of Senegal? What's the capital of Senegal? 
There we go. Now it's Dakar. Good job, Asinutria. Now you, it is Dakar. Dakar, yes. That's where Dakar is. It's the capital of Senegal. Um, what's the capital of Japan? What's the capital of Japan? The acid nutrient was first. It is Tokyo. Tokyo, says Shima. Yes. Tokyo, says Dr. Pickle. Good job, everybody. What's the capital of Kuwait? <laughs> Let's not return to Kyoto. Acid Nutri got it. Julio got it. Kuwait City. That's one of the easy ones. Kuwait City. Yes. Capital of Kuwait is Kuwait. What's the, oh, what's the capital of Djibouti? What's the capital of Djibouti? Yep, it is Djibouti. It's Djibouti City. I said Nutri got it. Djibouti is the capital of Djibouti. And now you'll always know if you didn't know. What's the capital of Romania? Yep, Bucharest. Yes, Bucharest. That's the nutrient. Got it first. Did you guys all know it's Bucharest? Um, what's the capital of Samoa? What's the capital of Samoa? I'm running out of water. I feel like I'm going to end the stream once the water's gone. <laughs> The chat goes quiet when it comes to Samoa. There we go. I said, oh no, Shima got it first. Apia, yes. It is Apia. It's the capital of Samoa. It's 3 a.m. for Molly's family. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm glad I can be here. We're doing a capital cities quiz. Um, what's the capital? Okay, what's the capital of Israel? <laughs> this one's hotly contested. It's almost 8 a.m. where you are, my goodness. Yeah, so uh, I give the answer to Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. It is, it depends what country you are that recognizes what part of Israel. <laughs> um, Israel insists it's Jerusalem. Many countries insist it's Tel Aviv. It's, that's, it's a tricky one. <laughs> um, what's the capital of Paraguay? It's Haifa. Yeah, it's it's very complicated when it comes to the capital there. What's the capital of Paraguay? Asuncion. Good job, Asinutrium. Know your capitals. What's the capital of Mauritius? I'm so glad, Molly. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. Mm. Oh, Port Louis. Good job. Acid Nutria is on top of it. This this game is called Beat Acid Nutria. <laughs> Can you get it above four Acid Nutria? Port Louis is the answer. What's the capital of Iran? You all know this. There we go. Tehran. <laughs> Acid Nutria wins again. It is Tehran. And last one on this page, what's the capital of Togo? Hey, Bites back. What's the capital of Togo? Yes, it's Lome. That's it, Nutri, you got it. It is Lome. What's the capital of Estonia? What's the capital of Estonia? Oh, it's getting hot. Oh, Acid Nutri got it again. It is Talon. Yes. Talon is the answer. Good job, you guys. What's the capital? Wow, I wrote the wrong answer there. <laughs> that is not right. Oh my goodness, I meant to put that up here. And there we go. Okay, what's the capital of the Bahamas? We have no life. <laughs> What's the capital of the Bahamas? It, Nassau, Grand Bahama. No, that's just an island in the Bahamas. The capital city is Nassau. 
<clears throat> Nassau. Um, don't know how to spell it. You're very close. Just one S. No, N A S S A U. No U in the middle. That's where it is. Okay. Um, what's the capital of Singapore? What's the capital of Singapore? Yep, it's itself. Singapore. It is a city state. <laughs> Good job, you guys. What's the capital of Somalia? What's the capital of Somalia? Sydney Tree got it first. Mogadishu. Callum and Julio got it. <laughs> Good job, guys. What's the capital of Ukraine? What's the capital of Ukraine? I'm going to end this. It's almost midnight my time, and that means it's time to get ready to work on my channel, so I'm going to end it there. <laughs> Asinuchi, try to write Kiev. Here we go. Kiev. Yes, Kiev. Kiev. Yes, yes, it is Kiev. <laughs> Um, what's the capital of Seychelles? <laughs> what's the capital of Seychelles? Oh, goodbye, apparently. Oh, you just don't know the capital of Seychelles. <laughs> it's an English name. Yes, Shema got it. It is Victoria. Good night, Stuntard. Hope you enjoyed. The capital of Seychelles is Victoria. Good job, Shema. So basic, I know. It's, it's an easy one. What's the capital of Trinidad and Tobago? What's the capital of Trinidad and Tobago? You know this. Okay. Who can get it before acid nutria? <laughs> All I can think of, whenever I think of Trinidad and Tobago, my mind goes, yeah, I'll take that. Port of Spain. Good job. I think of Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend <laughs> who apparently had an adverse reaction to the COVID vaccine. <laughs> anyway, Port of Spain is the answer. Um, what's the capital of Algeria? What's the capital of Algeria? Oh, I shouldn't have mentioned Nicki Minaj's cousin's friends. <laughs> Let me ban it there. Let me ban it. My computer's lagging. Give me a second, guys. Here we go. And oh, Callum got it first. It's Algiers. You all got it, but Callum was first. That No, no, no. Acid Nutria was first. You were stuck up in the bot there. It was Acid Nutria got it first. Algiers. Good job. Bots are crazy. I'm sorry. What's the capital of Afghanistan? What's the capital of Afghanistan? Asinutria got it first with Kabul. Kabul, yes, Kabul. Good job, everybody. Good job. What's the capital of Venezuela? What's the capital of Venezuela? Oh, your boyfriend's Afghani. Cool. Yep, Asinutria got it first with Caracas. It is Caracas. Um, what's the capital of Chad? What's the capital of Chad? Of course so. <laughs> what's the capital of Chad? It's, it does not start with an O. You're thinking of Burkina Faso. Nope, that's Burkina Faso, not Chad. Uganado. <laughs> nope. That is, you're, you're thinking of Burkina Faso's capital, yeah. No idea, says Shima. It's a really interesting name. 
Wagadougou is, oh, there you go, Asinutria, and Jemina. Yep, you got it, and Jemina. Bucharest. <laughs> No, it's in Jemena, same flag as Romania, but um, yeah. What's the capital of the United States? What's the capital of the United States of America? Yep. Florida, nope. <laughs> Washington, D.C. Yes, I knew you got it first. Not Austin, Texas. Not Las Vegas. <laughs> Washington, D.C. is the answer. Ooh, what's the capital of India? What's the capital of India? No, not Florida. I said Nutri got it. It is New Delhi. New Delhi is the answer. I'm trying to see if I have any. I don't. Okay, I'll have to fix that later. New Delhi, yes. <laughs> not Old Delhi. What is the capital of South Sudan, the world's newest country? That's widely recognized by the UN. Yes, it's Juba, Acid Nutria. This game is Beat Acid Nutria. Oh, you live in Delhi? That's awesome. That's very cool. Yes, it is Juba. Um, what's the capital of Uzbekistan? I believe so. What's the capital of Uzbekistan? If Tashkent. You guys didn't beat acid nutrients. It's Tashkent. What's the capital of Belgium? What's the capital of Belgium? Brussels. Acid Nutri got it first. Did you all know Brussels? That's great. Oh, I'm so happy I see so many Brussels there. Um, what's the capital of North Korea? Bruxelles. <laughs> what's the capital of North Korea? Oh, Byte got it first. Pyongyang. Yes. Byte got it before everyone. Pyongyang is the answer. All right. One more. And then I'm going to call it a night because I'm getting sweaty and tired and I need to film tonight. What is the capital of Gabon. <laughs> What's the capital of Gabon? It's come up a couple times already. What's the capital of Gabon? I'm seeing the lag pop up. I can only go for so long. What's the capital of Gabon? Someone's tried to say it for like a bunch of other West African countries. Yep, Libreville. Acid Nutrio wins that with Libreville. Already. You're not cheating. <laughs> it's fine. I don't mind if you guys Google the answer because then you're learning instead of just sitting around wondering. Helps you learn. Anyway, I'm going to call it a night. I'm getting hot and a little tired and. I should not be feeling like that before I start filming because it affects the quality of the video. So I'm going to end it there. So it would be the quickest. You're very welcome. Oh, thank you guys. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everybody. You're all so sweet. Have a good night, okay? And there is a bot. <laughs> good morning. Yes. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Take care.